I call this Coventry Town Council meeting to order on Tuesday, January 21st, 2020. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk will note that all council members are present this evening. All right, next portion of our meeting is audience of citizens. Uh, I want to read a quick statement. Last meeting I did ask people to be respectful, and that seems to have maybe been mischaracterized in our newspapers. So I just want to make some clarification of the statement I made regarding audience of citizens at the last meeting. <laughs> The intention was not to create a new policy or directive for the content of statements made by speakers. My intention was to point out that while speakers can speak on any topic, the most beneficial to us as a council, in terms of hearing your thoughts, are those that pertain to council business, government-related public policy, and town programs and services, generally pressing matters that can be addressed by the council as a governing body. I'd also remind and encourage citizens to contact the council by email, to which we can give written responses to question, and as always, please be respectful. Uh, we have the fire department and our fire administrator that wanted to present during audience of citizens this evening. Yep. If you'd like to go. The two fire chiefs would like to make a presentation. Good evening, I'm Ken Booten, Chief of the Coventry Volunteer Fire Association. Joining me is Bud Myers, Chief of North Coventry Fire, so Fire Department. Uh, also with us is Jim McLaughlin, Town Fire Administrator. Uh, we'd like to uh, take a moment and recognize a couple of our firefighters on behalf of the Town of Coventry Fire EMS Department uh, for their actions at a recent fire. Uh, December 30th. We've prepared uh, commendations for them. Uh, Chief Myers, read yep, um, the description. So, in recognition of your exceptional efforts on December 29th, 2019, at 11 53 p.m., you were dispatched to a reported fire alarm at 821 Main Street. Upon arrival, you were simultaneously faced with a structure fire and a burn victim. While assessing incident priorities, additional information was received that someone else was still inside the building. Without hesitation, you formed a team and initiated an interior attack, located and removed the second burn victim and extinguished the fire. Your actions are an epitome of selflessness and your heroic actions have not gone unnoticed. We, pre we present you with the Chief's Award of Excellence. At this time we'd like to present the accommodations to Firefighter Ryan Booten. Firefighter Peter Froment. <laughs> and firefighter Justin Rondo. tonight and also getting the award is EMS Captain Craig Milan.
Thank you, gentlemen, for your service to the town of Coventry. And I'd like to take a moment to thank the uh, town council and town manager for their support over the years. Um, last time we had a, another structure fire, and I just want to say congratulations. It was a good save of a house, um, and it was a pleasure for me to have uh, departments from other towns walk up to me and say, you guys did good. And so I wanted to just share it with uh, both departments that were there, uh, putting out, saving a house. Uh, there were no injuries either of our firefighters or, or uh, people in the household, but it really was a compliment to have the other department say it was a good save. So thank you. I want to say thank you, that we appreciate everything you do, the time that you give and the things you do. Thank you. Here, here. That's who we are. Yeah. Okay. Who would like to speak first during audience of citizens? Please state your name and your address. My name is Jennifer Bedez. I live at 154 Bear Swamp Road. And I lived 20 years at 56 Willamina Turnpike in Coventry. Uh, I, I have a statement. I'll respect your five-minute rule. And I have a few questions just left to ponder. I'm not looking for answers tonight. Good evening, town council members, and thank you. My name is Jennifer Burdett. There is no safety in silence. A quote from Coventry Town Minutes, March 2013. When my daughter was 15 years old and a freshman in high school, she received disturbing Facebook messages from a man in his 30s. Communication went on for months. Her age and his were immediately discussed. He specifically told her, trust is important. Complained about his marriage and job, how he gambled all night at the casino. Told her she was a bad girl, a wise ASS. She sucked. I'm stalking your Facebook page. Don't be scared. The conversation turned sexual quickly with him discussing her sexual preferences with her. You are beautiful, and I feel like a dirty old man looking at your pictures. He proclaimed he wanted to be special. He requested she not tell anyone about the picture he showed her and to not post on his Facebook wall. Trust is important. He encouraged her to send inappropriate photos to him and told her as long as she immediately deleted them, upon, as long as he immediately deleted them, upon receiving them, he was not breaking the law and provided a private email for her to send them to. Trust is important. He told her she was lazy if she didn't send photos and hounded her repetitively for them. He reminded her repetitively of his job title, quoting her nonstop on sexual assault statues, telling her 16 was good to go while she was 15, commanding she call him by his job title, telling her other boys were competition for him. When she expressed concern about a suicidal friend, he stated to her he's probably just doing it for attention. He tried to persuade her to walk to meet him on the town line of Coventry and Andover while he was on duty at work. He proclaimed, I really don't give a blank if your parents would be pissed that I'm trying to hook up with you. I'm sure you would all agree this is truly disgusting and horrific. This is classic predatory behavior we all recognize today. Even more horrific, these words came from a Coventry police officer while he was on duty by his own written message and on the Coventry citizens' time and tax dollars. Patrol car, full weapon arsenal, full police power. Coventry, you paid for this officer to berdate upon my daughter. My daughter discovered this conversation was still on her Facebook last year and contacted me immediately. <coughs> this experience has traumatized her to today. Along with traumatizing her, this hurt and affected everyone who loves her. I spoke with Chief Palmer immediately 9-23-2019, and was instructed to not talk to anyone about this. No need to call Troop K. The very next day, my daughter received a call from Chief Palmer stating Coventry police were not investigating this criminally, but they would perhaps consider sanctioning it. Interestingly enough, Troop K felt differently that this crime had occurred in Andover under their criminal jurisdiction and referred this criminal investigation to major crimes. There's no safety in silence. This officer finally was placed on administrative leave, but at Chief Palmer's discretion, retains his weapon paid for by Coventry citizens. I disagree with this choice strongly. I feared for my safety and outlined the various reasons why on my complaint. This officer's very own father stated in writing to my daughter, his son performed this act due to stress in his life. But she should be complimented by it, because she's so beautiful, any guy would do anything to be with her. At 15? So now, 
This officer has the stress of this investigation. And we should not trust this officer to make proper legal, moral, and safe decisions. I request the town council ask Chief Palmer to take this officer's Coventry issued weapon away. I spend every day afraid for my safety due to coming forward with this. Even DCF warned me to not drive through Coventry at this time, but here I am. Coventry Town Council apparently was never informed of this last year, which I do find concerning, and perhaps this never even went farther than the deaths of the police chief, town attorney, and town manager. Worried about a potential lawsuit, performing damage control, fear other potential victims may come forward, even if unintentional. I feel this neglected the safety of the youth in town. Town Council, in my opinion, and from my understanding, was muzzled into silence by the town manager last week. Instruct, perhaps advised by the town attorney, instructed not to speak of this or have an opinion or comment. Even though a few members received a letter of concern, they can't place it on their agenda, which appears to go against the council's own protocol from my understanding. So I ask, how do you feel about being silenced? How do you feel that the victim's mother had to inform you months later? Who will change the town notification laws and require the police chief, town manager to notify the superintendent school administration, and town council members when a Coventry employee is placed in a position of trust. Placed in a position of trust has been placed on leave for investigation of inappropriate behavior toward minors. Is anyone monitoring what town employees are doing on the internet while on duty for the town of Coventry? As this man himself said to my daughter, trust is important. Well, council members, I surely do feel it is important. And this officer destroyed the trust Coventry placed in him. Since you can't break the silence, I just have. Please protect the youth of Coventry. Send a strong message that wielding your badge as a tool of sexual intimidation and coercion to a minor is not acceptable behavior. And make sure Michael Hicks never has police power in Coventry again. Trust is important. And the silence is broken. And thank you for letting me speak. It's much appreciated. Howard Hayward, 80 Cassie Hill Road, Coventry. Uh, well, it's hard to follow. Sorry. <coughs> sorry. Tonight I'll be addressing one of the goals listed for our Town Council's 2020-2021 agenda, transparency. Transparency and freedom of speech are two important ingredients that are required in order to have a true democracy. The last town council meeting, I was going to speak under the audience of citizens portion about some ugly issues that are still existing in our town. Instead of me being able to speak and exercise my freedom of speech rights, I was censored. The citizens of Coventry were told that we can no longer talk freely about different subjects. We have had that right for as long as I can remember. The fact is that our town council chairwoman, Julie Blanchard, illegally changed the rules of the audience of citizens. Without, at that time, not knowing that this was an illegal action and respecting her position as the chairwoman, I instead refrained from speaking and left the building. Only after I got home and read the rules did I real realize that Chairman Julie Blanchard had illegally changed the rules to suit her agenda to protect her friends, the O'Briens. Days later, interesting articles, not misleading articles, interesting articles of truth were printed in both the Chronicle and Journal Inquirer regarding this illegal action. The Chronicle. It doesn't matter what the audience wants to talk about. It is denying members of the public the right to discuss what they want with the people. Chronicle. The choice of limiting what can be discussed appears to go against the board's code of conduct. Journal Inquirer, ACLU, Legal Director Daniel Barrett. A prime purpose of the public comment section of the council meeting is for voters to speak their mind and to evaluate their job performance. That's the heartbeat of democracy. J.I. article from Hank Murray, labor employment lawyer. 
One of the founding principles of the First Amendment is that government officials are not supposed to regulate the content of speech. William Dunlap, Quinnipiac Law Professor. It is highly problematic the Council wouldn't follow its own rules and regulations. Boards are generally required to follow their own rules, and, and if that is going to interfere with someone's ability to speak at a meeting, the court is likely to take it seriously. To sum it up, Chairwoman Julie Blanchard has illegally tried to eliminate our freedom of speech rights. I wonder why she wasn't willing to speak to our press. Maybe transparency applies to only what is on her agenda. Or maybe she knew it was illegal all along and didn't want to talk about it. You see, people like me are really upset and want our town council to do what's best for our town and to represent all citizens fairly, without bias, and to allow us our freedom of speech. People like me have never been so disappointed by the actions and unprofessional remarks of certain town council members. I've been a Coventry resident for over 40 years and prior to last month have never spoken in negative, uh, anything negative about any council member. I wonder what happened. Maybe our council should be more transparent about the root cause of our problems. Who and what actually started this? Why are the newspapers continuing to print these articles? It's funny, it wasn't like this when Republican Mike Sobel was on our town council. Maybe this is a clue. He did what was best for our town of Coventry, so he was dropped from the Republican slate by, the by Mr. O'Brien Sr. Transparency is a joke in just meaningless <coughs> words when your freedom of speech is eliminated and when the illegal changing of our rules are allowed. I don't have to tell anybody here about the importance of freedom of speech. Without it, we don't have a democracy. Many a brave soldier has died to protect that right. Countries go to war to fight for that right. Journalists are murdered defending that right. Freedom of speech. Here's a perfect example. Look what council member Matt O'Brien <coughs> was legally allowed to say under the freedom of speech rights. That all Democrats are godless people who compromise with the devil. It's very concerning and disappointing, but he had the right to say that under his freedom of speech rights. However, it would violate the oath he took when he was sworn in under God in order to become a town council member. So we need transparency. It's important that council member Matt O'Brien Jr. be transparent so that all the citizens of Coventry know that he still shares these beliefs. I'm hoping that all the citizens of Coventry attend and or watch the webcast and of the board and, and council meeting <coughs> watch the actions of our elected representatives. No longer can we sit by. We must always vote for the best candidates by knowing the truth of their actions and not be fooled by false red propaganda signs like the ones that we used last year. Like Mahatma Gandhi said, tomorrow's future depends on what we do today. So it is today that all citizens of Carnegie should be watching and voting according to what our representatives do every day. Our future does depend on that. I'm handing in my speech to be read into the minutes. And thank you. Who would like to speak next? Carolyn Arabolis, 132 North Farms Road. At the last town council meeting, Chairwoman Julie Blanchard attempted to silence citizens with a directive that the audience of citizens portion of the meeting focus only on the business before the council and to not call out any council members by name. There is no such mandate in the Coventry Town Council standing rules of procedure. As stated in its introduction, the rules of procedure are designed to enable the council to discharge its duties expeditiously, fairly, and completely in the spirit of open government. Attempting to silence its citizens does not equate to open government. The audience of citizens is a standard agenda item for each council meeting as listed in section 2.04 of the rules of procedure. Section 2.10 <coughs> specifically addresses the audience of citizens portion of the council meetings. During this time, when the council has opportunity 
to hear directly from citizens. The chair is to encourage brevity and conciseness, meaning he or she would ask speakers to provide their commentary <coughs> within a reasonable amount of time, such as five minutes. The chair does not have the authority to direct the community during this time. The people of this town have the right to stand before this council to address anything that concerns them regarding Coventry. This includes requests made of our elected leaders. What the chair does have the authority to do is to appoint a member of the council to discuss the concerns voiced by a particular citizen if the concerns have not been resolved. This council has heard from some of its citizens more than once regarding their unmet and unanswered <coughs> requests. I would ask Chairwoman Blanchard if she has appointed anyone from this council to address the concerns that have been raised. As I am one of those citizens, and I have not heard anything from Ms. Blanchard, nor have I been made aware of any council member being appointed to address my or my neighbor's concerns, I would conclude that the answer is no. Madam Chair, I understand you, like myself, are affiliated with a political party, though not the same party. I respect that your party holds the majority position of the town, both the town council and the board of education. However, in your role as town council chair, your primary obligation of duty is to the citizens of this town and not to your party. Before I begin, I would appreciate it if I could have the attention of um, all the members of the council. Mr. O'Brien, senior, I'd appreciate it if I could have your attention while I speak. Thank you. And I, I hope that you've somehow heard what the previous speaker said. Good evening. My name is Catherine Canelli, 2293 Main Street. I am here tonight because something very disturbing is happening in our town. My first concern came when I saw oversized negative and misleading signs all over town leading up to the last election. It was only well after the election that I learned the signs were encouraged and are influenced by Joseph Visconti, a politician in West Hartford who was on the fringe of politics, who served on the town council there several years ago, then ran twice unsuccessfully for governor, first as an independent candidate and garnered only 1% of the vote, then as a Republican when he withdrew before the Republican Party convention. He also ran unsuccessfully prior to that for the U.S. Congress. As recently as August 2018, Mr. Visconti was <coughs> criticized by both state Democratic and Republican leaders for making racist remarks about the then candidate for Attorney General William Young. Yet he managed to persuade our town Republicans to wage a negative campaign. All Coventry citizens should find this disturbing. We then had the unfortunate incident at a November Board of Education meeting when both of the O'Briens publicly used inappropriate language. Subsequently, Mr. O'Brien Jr. posted Mr. Orris's personal information on the Facebook page of Mr. Visconti. Fortunately, it was subsequently removed. Following these incidents, several citizens spoke at multiple council meetings, repeatedly asking for public apologies from the O'Briens, or at least an apology to the students who were in attendance at that board meeting. Neither has done so or has even defended his behavior, although Mr. O'Brien Sr. at the last meeting lamely backtracked after two months and tried to claim he had acted as a private citizen. The most recent event was at the last council meeting when the council chair, Ms. Blanchard, misused her position when she tried to restrict the public's right to free speech. A speaker was actually called out of order, so I do not think that her words were mischaracterized. I am not a political person. In the four towns I have lived in as an adult, this is the first one in which I have felt compelled to publicly address what I perceive as something similar, and I hate to say this, as what happened in a European country prior to World War II. 
I beg the remaining Republican representative on the council to intervene and lead his party in a more civil and positive way than what is happening now. Perhaps, however, the council as a body can affect change. Thank you. Uh, I would like this read into the minutes. My name is Emma Eaton. I live at 41 Sean Circle. First, from the handbook for elected Mr. O'Brien. Really? Mr. O'Brien, hi. Your audience of citizens is here to speak to you as a council. Your inattention during this entire thing, except for during the absolutely well-earned commendations for our firefighters, is it's embarrassing for you. Stop. We're here to speak to you, <clears throat> specifically. Mr. O'Brien, we will wait. From the handbook for elected and appointed officials and volunteers published by the town of Coventry, I want to remind all council members of the following items. From the volunteer code of conduct, you are all bound to abide by. One, acting professionally and in the best interest of the town of Coventry, at all times. Two, treating people with respect, even when they disagree. Three, avoiding discourteous or abusive language or conduct towards others while representing the town of Coventry. Mr. Matt O'Brien Jr. and Mr. Matt O'Brien Sr. have both quite clearly violated all of these first three tenets and also clearly don't have much respect for the fact that they are bound by them. Second, Chairwoman Blanchard's attempt to restrict the free speech of this town's citizens at the last town council meeting by limiting the content of statements made at audience of citizens is out of line and contrary to the democratic process. Audience of citizens exists as a way for citizens to express concerns about their town in whatever form they take. It is a key way that this council maintains transparency and accountability as an elected body. We attend these meetings to communicate issues we feel are of significant importance to this town that we are all rooted in and care deeply for. Additionally, this country relies on the First Amendment of the Constitution to limit the government from abridging the freedom of speech and gives people the right to petition government for a redress of grievances. In other words, the exact reason all of us have been coming here for months to try and right the wrongs that were done surrounding the Board of Education meeting in November. Lastly, I speak for myself when I say that I don't want this to continue for this to drag on. Council has important business to attend to, and it's my hope that this issue can be properly. Thank you. Put to rest and that work can progress without need of citizens coming here to continue to demand accountability and transparency. However, if members of this council who ran and were elected on a promise of absolute transparency in government continue to avoid communicating openly on the issue of their clearly unethical conduct, then I would request that per Article 2.10 of the Coventry Town Council's Standing Rules of Procedure, which reads in part, if it appears that after a reasonable period of time, such as five minutes, the particular citizen's concerns cannot be resolved, the chair should appoint a member of the council to discuss those concerns more fully with that citizen and report back to the council. I would request that the chair agrees to appoint a member of council to address this issue formally since they are not being handled in a responsible manner by the parties directly involved. The need for this request is still easily avoidable if the members in question will simply acknowledge that their actions at and around the November 14th Board of Education meeting were an error, that they feel remorse for them, and that they regret the presence of children and families when all of this took place. Kathleen Breitenwisher, 61 Barber Drive. Um, I didn't plan on getting up tonight, um, but I felt like I needed to. Um, 
Ms. Blanchard, you indicated that you were mischaracterized in the paper. However, I was here last week um, or two weeks ago when you said um, to keep it to council business and not to call out specific members. Um, so I will take what you said at the beginning of this meeting as your way of saying that you made a mistake um, or misspoke. Um, but here's my concern or question um, to Matt O'Brien Sr. Um, why did you attempt to call me out of order? Um, did you not like what you were hearing from me? That's the only conclusion I have at this point. Um, and my guess is because the truth hurts. Hello, good evening. My name is Linda Blakesley. I live at 27 Berry Avenue. And thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight on the following topics. First, I want to say that I commend the residents who have voiced their concerns and opinions to the council, some for the very first time. My advice to them is to continue being a voice on issues that affect them and their neighbors as it relates to budget and public policy. Sometimes when we have a disagreement with someone, we may believe that that person owes others or us an apology. It is certainly your right to ask for one. However, after you have requested one several times and the other party chooses not to offer an apology, you must move on. You are no longer being effective by continuing to repeat the same message with the same result. Be assured that your position is on the record. If you are concerned about the quality of life of the citizens of this town, then I urge you to take a stand on an issue that affects the daily lives of the residents. Sometimes our feelings get hurt or we think we are right and others are wrong, but the only person we can control is ourselves. Take your energy that you have on this apology issue and transfer it to issues that this council will be debating. Second, according to the moving on from that, second, according to the 2019 CERC pro town profile, there are 777 people of color residing in Coventry. I see a town council before me that does not represent the racial makeup of this town. I ask that the council or steering committee address these questions and explore this topic in the coming months and years that they will be serving. What have the major political parties in town done to encourage people of color to join, become active members, and run for office? Has the town actively recruited people of color to work in the various positions in town. Remember, we can say that we welcome all people to join us, but if they don't feel welcome, then we are failing at this. We need to do more to ensure that all of our residents' voices are heard and that they are represented on the various boards and commissions throughout the town. And I'll be revisiting this topic um, in the coming months. Third, I wish to introduce you to you tonight, Alice. ALICE is an acronym uh, from the United Way. It stands for Asset Limited Income Constrained Employed. And I'd like to read an excerpt from the United Way report. ALICE is our friend, neighbor, coworker, and family member. ALICE cares for our children and aging parents, fixes our cars, and works in our local grocery stores, retail stores, and restaurants. Alice lives in every town and city in Connecticut. In fact, in Connecticut, more than 400,000 households are Alice households with income above the federal poverty level, but below the state's basic cost of living threshold as defined in the 2018 Alice report. Um, the work, Alice workers are essential to every community's success. We lean on Alice for support, yet, Many Alice households are one emergency away from, from a financial crisis impacting their ability to feed their family, heat their home, and maintain their housing and ensure medical care. In Coventry, 23% of the households are Alice households. That's nearly one in four, nearly 25%. Uh, they're your neighbor person behind you at the pharmacy. We're in this room. In the coming mo months, I urge you to keep
keep Alice at the forefront of your mind as you craft the budget. And I look forward to sharing more about that. I'm just introducing that, that topic tonight. Uh, fourth, and um, now it's, it's not sure how this will be received, but the chief of police will be speaking about accreditation tonight. I'd like to know how the fitness levels of our officers play a role in this process. Uh, we always talk about the best equipment and tools that our officers need uh, to do their job. However, in my opinion, it is most important for our officers to meet the physical demands of the job, to be fit and, and uh, be able to perform those tasks. And uh, finally, the, I just wanted to do a public service announcement about the census. The census is uh, coming up, the 2020 census, April 1st. And I encourage all residents to complete it. Um, fund, federal funding is um, contingent upon completion of the census. So we want to make sure as many people are educated about it, know how to do it, and complete it so that we can have those numbers for our town. So I would hope that the um, town can put <coughs> something on their website. There's great links to resources that can provide education for the residents of this town. Thank you. I look forward to seeing you again over the next several months. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak this evening? <coughs> yes, my name is Jason Blakesley. I live at 27 Berry Avenue also. Um, yes, I do still live there, and I did drive the car that was seized from Mr. Mark Palmer five years ago when I was arrested for growing my own medical cannabis. I was just at the gym running on the treadmill, and I apologize what you had to go through. Um, but Sergeant Hicks was a part of my investigation. I was so enraged running on the treadmill when I heard this, I stopped my run short to come here. I was going to come here in two weeks and discuss my whole case because, as John know, I made a complaint about Sergeant Hicks several years ago. And Sergeant Hicks also almost hit my wife running when he was on his cell phone. So there's a long sheet of this guy being a real scumbag. And he... If I ever showed anyone my warrant and how much he lied, you guys would be outraged. But the way how he treated me while I was a prisoner, like I said, I have my own cannabis card. The way they treated me for growing cannabis. And I made a complaint, and Mark did nothing. Mark didn't even investigate. Even though I made the complaint, he never even investigated because... When he spoke to me, he wanted me to incriminate myself in my case. So I didn't. So then he never investigated. So I'm going to come back in two weeks with my full case about how the police department mistreats people, how most of the time they're incompetent. Because as you know, John, when they seize my cars, where'd they store those cars? They didn't store them in a garage. They stored them at the waste treatment center under trees. So when I finally picked them up, they were filled with mice. And I'm just wondering, why would they store people's possessions that way? So when I got my car back, it was devalued. The other car we got back, we had to take off the road because it was destroyed because it had about 500 mice in there. And according to many department heads that were outraged that my cars were seized because they told me where they were, they said that they've had issues with their own equipment up there. So why they stored my vehicles there is, was just sending a message. So I, I'm really sorry what you had to go through, but Sergeant Hicks also almost ruined my life. And um, I got to spend a short time in jail in a dorm of 60 people. So, um, yeah, I know what Sergeant Hicks can do. I know his wife, his ex-wife, who he cheated on allegedly like 20 times with 20 different women. So I will see you guys in two weeks. So thank you. I want to close the audience of citizen portions of this evening because we have other things to do. Thank you, everyone, that was willing to come and speak. Next on our agenda is item 10A, 19 slash 20 dash 36. Consideration and possible action on police department PREA grant. Chief Palmer. Thank you. So I 
I sent the council members a packet in advance to yeah. have some background information. It's quite extensive information, and uh, hopefully you, you have a chance to look at it. Um, so this grant is um, administered by the uh, nonprofit organization called Impact Justice, and it's the grant is called the PREA Targeted Information Support Program Grant. Um, PREA stands for Prison Rape Elimination Act. Probably we have that information. It's a federal regulation that was passed in 2012, uh, came effective in 2012. It impacts all prisons, jails, um, county lockups, and police lockups. Um, for, the, for the purposes of um, enforcement, if a state agency does not comply with the regulations, they can be um, a certain amount of Department of Justice funds that are sent to that state can be withheld. It does not apply to uh, police lockups, however, but the uh, regulations still apply to us. So this grant became available. I saw it on one of the. Uh, um, can you pull that and promote it, John? Can you shut that back door, please? There are seats available. Some people are standing. If they want to come in. Mm -hmm. I saw it on one of the um, services I subscribed to. And um, it was my hope that we would apply for this anyway, and this grant became available uh, to assist us in doing that. So uh, I applied for the grant. It's a competitive grant. We got a not notification that we were awarded the grant, um, and I'm looking for final approval from the from the town council. Um, so hopefully, we've had a chance to look at it. I don't know if you're looking for any additional information or, or anything that uh, you'd like to answer about the grant. I'd be glad to. Do it. I provide that to you. Yes. Um, I actually I had several questions, but first of all, I want to say congratulations for winning the competition. That's, that's fantastic news. Um, and I, some of these questions may be able to be answered by John and or Amanda as well. Um, but first of all, one of the things I noticed um, is that there's a planning committee that's associated with it. That, um, you identified any that'll be committee members inside the department. Inside the, um, the grant also provides a facilitator from um, the Impact Justice Organization mm -hmm. to help kind of finalize our budget. I, I presented a uh, kind of a preliminary budget. Uh, mm -hmm. They assist us in finalizing the budget. They assist us in kind of working through the grant. The grant is for a two-year period. Uh, actually, I think it's two and a half years. It expires in July of 2022. Um, so we're expected to complete the project by then, which will include an audit of the facility, of the holding facility by a certified uh, Department of Justice auditor, mm -hmm. um, and funds for that audit is included in the budget. So um, we'll have an internal committee that, that will do it. Okay. And then just for the good of the auditor, it's, it's, there's a, a designated planning period and then there's the implementation right. period. Mm -hmm. and, um, what are your outcomes? I, I, I just to discuss for the people that haven't sure. seen this material. So the outcome is to have a certified lockup that's been inspected by a Department of Justice auditor, uh, to have policies and procedures in place that comply with the PREA standards, to have training for our officers, and also there's a portion of the grant that, that includes money for um, upgraded equipment, mm -hmm. which will include um, additional recording of our um, lockup. Uh, we record the video, but we don't have, do not record the audio because there's a great deal of uh, data, <coughs> data that's needed to record audio. So we hope to get a larger recording unit that we can keep that audio for a certain period of time. And also we want to put in an, an enunciator. So when an officer goes into the holding facility, before they go in the holding facility, they push a button, they announce whether it's a male or female officer. So if, <clears throat> let's say it's a, uh, a male prisoner and a female officer goes in there or using the toilet or something else, they can at least have notice that the female officer is going in there and vice versa. Um, so th those are the equipment requirements. So it's training, equipment, um, policy development, and a okay. um, 
I, I, there is a required match there is. associated with it. And um, I noticed that part of the match requirement is met um, by a third party co cost share. And this is probably a question more for General Amanda, but are there um, some kind of mechanism, is there some kind of mechanism in place to track that third party cost share? Because that can get really problematic. Yeah. So I'd be responsible for reporting all the uh, personnel time that's associated with developing the policy and doing the training and so forth. Um, there was no money being requested, as far as what I remember. No, correct. it's all it's all in kind um, services. But it still must be tracked. Yeah, we have to track all that. We do. We have to track all the in kind services. It's in kind services. We we have a lot of grants that have in kind uh, matches. So between the chief and Amanda, we'll set up a mechanism through the timesheets to to track that. That we you know do the spreadsheet to to do a, the FICA and the retirement and all those other benefit sides of that. So we track the the number of hours to the pay rate and go forward. So we have experience with that. You're absolutely right. You have to make sure you keep it as you're going along because afterwards it's impossible. Well, I, and I was just thinking about the, the third parties here that, that we're having that are collaborating um, because that's, you know, one layer more difficult to track. But I and think that's the consult, the yeah, advisor so consultant. Okay. So, well, and then another, another collaborator is the, um, Yes. They had something in their letter about um, it. Yes, it's uh, SACCEC, which is the um, Section Saw Crisis Center of Eastern Connecticut. Mm -hmm. um, they are already familiar with the pretty standards. They've worked on uh, Implementing the standards in the jail that were located, uh, run by Cardinal Corrections, located in Eastern Connecticut. Um, they will, they're familiar with keeping track of their hours so they can use that as part of the match. I, uh, I don't know if you do this already, but um, I know for our grants, when we, especially when we have a tertiary sub award, because we're a sub award basically for this grant. Um, there's there we have uh, commitment forms that are signed in place before the award is agreed and is executed. If you want to afford us, we'll, we'll have to look at that. Do so you have an example? For an example, sure. Yeah, we're we're not that sophisticated, but our our numbers are are, are smaller for the types of things we're doing that we need them, but we certainly can learn from them. Um, but <coughs> we are aware that the federal government is not forgiving. <laughs> No. <laughs> Does anyone else have any questions? Um, real quick, Chief. Um, I noticed that most most of our in-kind would be um, overtime. I'm just curious about budgetary, any issues at all, you know, that we... No, actually, uh, our in-kind will be uh, staff time from me, uh, my executive assistant, uh, three police sergeants working on policy the, development. The training was all... The training is going to be paid for by the grant. Oh, it is? Okay. Mm -hmm. So the overtime for the... Officers to be trained with. Okay, cool. Thank you. So, one one of the outcomes that I think the chief put in some um, numbers that was not wasn't brought tonight just for everybody else is that when we establish this protocol and, and procedures, there'll be a model for other communities. So, once again, our department, although this doesn't sound like it tonight, is a leader in uh, in uh, setting examples of how to do that and. and we would love to, to comment, but it's not appropriate uh, for us to comment right now <coughs> on any of these issues. But uh, um, so. so, in terms of Priya, I'm not aware of any other municipal lockup that is uh, certified Priya compliant by the Department of Justice. Did he apply for this grant? I'm not. I don't know. I don't you know. I, I know a lot of people in prisons and jails apply for it. I don't know if any people lock up. Um, I understand state police is. Um, working toward pretty compliance and apply for the grant, um, but uh, they, they're working towards it. So we'll probably collaborate with them on uh, policy issues and things like that. I really appreciate you sending the packet along ahead of time. So that we I know there was a lot of information. It didn't really lend itself to kind of scanning and everything yeah. else. I want to put it in the tab. 
quick one. Um, so it says in here about that the, everyone must complete the implementation process. Basically, it says regardless of base and unforeseen delays and all stuff by September 30th, 2022. When when do we think we will have it completed by or implemented? Uh, I hope to be completed well before that. Okay. End of uh, probably within a year. At the okay. Moment. That's the kind of, I won't hold you to that, but They're pretty much saying it's no good to have a ballpark. Yeah. They're pretty much saying no cost, no, no cost extensions on this. Exactly, yeah. Like it seemed pretty well spelled out that that was a hard and fast end. Mm -hmm. so. Well, I thank you, Chief, for bringing this before us because the chance to improve anything is appreciated, and especially at no dollars to our taxpayers. <laughs> so, well, I, I, well, there is a, there, there is a match. But that match is staff time. So right. my time, my assistant, sergeants, and any other, any of our already um, on board staff that's going to be working on that. And then the training, of course. Yeah, and so also there's outside agencies, state police have committed to assist us. Mm -hmm. if I think we're kind of <coughs> further along than they are right now. Um, and also the Sexual Assault Crisis Center of Eastern Connecticut. That's counted in as part of the match. Okay. That's great. Maybe yeah, we thank you for pursuing it and getting it and bringing it to us. This is true. Um, and I'm the school resource officer. I'm not doing it. Where does it come on our... Who's right? Um, sure. One of the concept goals uh, was to look at the uh, school resource officers as a potential item. Uh, two days after the goals were adopted, uh, I got an email that I'm sure the chief also got uh, Announcing school resource officers ran uh, opportunity. You think they read our goals? <laughs> I don't know. It's just uh, kismet. But, uh, so uh, we've talked about this from time to time, and uh, there's again time to prepare an application. And I uh, want to know whether this is something that we should proceed ahead with. And uh, at least that's well, the discussion. Well, let me first say that I've, I've had an informal discussion with the superintendent. Um, the, Board of Education has not formally taken up this issue, so you really cannot commit to where they stand on whether they want to seek school resource officers in schools or not. I certainly am a proponent of that. Um, the superintendent um, told me that he um, supports the concept. Um, you know, we talked about this several years ago when there was um, some discussions about funding and where that funding would come from, but it just kind of fizzled out, to be quite frank with you. Uh, so, I think, um, obviously, we have to get the superintendent, the Board of Education, on board with this. Um, because I, I never agree with shoving things people down, you know, shoving things down people's throats that um, don't want to get on board with the program. That being said, um, the grant application is due March 2nd, March 11th, I'm sorry. Um, Federal grants are quite extensive, so there's a lot of work that has to be done. We've already done a lot of the preliminary work in terms of signing up for the DUNS number and the system of awards management database and so forth. But the grant, um, basically in a nutshell, is, I don't know if I provided this to you, maybe not. Uh, I gave it to you. Okay, so in a nutshell, it, it provides for hiring new police officers, it provides for 75% of their salary, for a period of three years, after which the hiring body, the town council, um, would have to commit to keeping that person on, that person or persons on for at least another year. It pays 75% of salary and benefits. and benefits, but it doesn't pay uniforms, training, and all those other things associated with bringing on a new officer. Equipment. I, I, and equipment. So I pose the question to the grant agency, um, would this allow us to take a currently certified officer and place that officer in the school system if we, apply, if we were to apply for a school resource officer? And the answer was yes. Um, but my fear is that would, certainly that would reduce our, our ranks in, in the patrol force by however many we put in schools. Um, until that person was able to go through the academy or if we hired a lateral, um, they'll go through our own training program, get that person outfitted and up and running. Um, 
So, because I don't believe we should put a brand new officer in the school. It should be somebody with experience and, um, you know, it's just the, the, the aptitude to go into the school and, and the different uh, um, skills that you would need in that setting. <coughs> Would you be required to hire a second officer? You would not, from what you just said. You wouldn't have to replace the officer if you moved him into the school. That's not a requirement of the grant. So if I just took an officer that was on now, yeah, and put them into the school, yeah, would they the require you to hire us? The grant would allow us to replace that officer. Right. Okay. Yes. That would be your intention, because then it wouldn't impact our ranks. Well, it's, it's going to take a long time. However, uh, yeah. if you remember, it takes six months, close to a year, yeah. close to a year to recruit, hire, train, outfit a police officer. Um, gotcha. There is a twenty-five percent match as well. There is. Yes. Twenty-five percent cash match. And I, I noticed here it says also it requires us to identify specific crime and disorder problems, so we'd have to come up with some data with the school. Yeah, that data is readily available. Mm -hmm. For the application process, I assume. Yes. Just, yeah. Me too. If I'm not mistaken, uh, even the school board's proposed budget, they are proposing some type of um, school security school person. security person. So this might dovetail into that. Mm -hmm. And so I talked. To, I asked the superintendent about that because I noted that uh, also. I, I think I read an article in one of the papers about a school security person. Um, I don't want to speak for the superintendent, but I can just tell you what he told me. Um, so as you may know or recall, um, when I assigned Sergeant Optenbrow as our administrative sergeant, one of his major function was, was to collaborate with the schools on security issues. Um, the superintendent said he's finding that um, the people that he's assigned to do that also, they, you know, he's taking other duties um, that they already have and um, assigning them to that so he would have, have a specific person just to coordinate school <coughs> security issues. Lockdowns, equipment, for security surveys, meetings that uh, we have with the school on a regular basis, security meetings. Uh, so that's what he said about that. So that, <coughs> that would not be a sworn armed officer or sworn armed, not sworn person. Um, it's just kind of a security coordinator. That's what we told Good. <coughs> The resource officer play that <coughs> type of role as well, or is this? Well, that's part of what that's part of what a school resource officer would do. Um, help the school with the security issues and so forth and so on. So then, this could be a budgetary savings to the school board if it were to possibly move forward. That's not for me. Yeah, but, but I mean, it could be. Lisa, I have two questions, but I'm having a really hard time keeping a clear head right now. So I'll get as far as I can. But that was a really intense audience of citizens. The grant says up to $125,000 over three years. Is that $125,000 per individual per year? Or is that divided up over three years, that $125,000? Uh, no, it's per, per officer. However many offers we apply for, if we were to receive the grants, it would be three-year funding for one officer. So if you have multiple officers, it'd be three years for each officer. Um, and do you have a sense of how many officers you would be looking for under this grant? Uh, I think I need to, um, uh, number one, I, I need to speak with the superintendent about that. And certainly, you know, the school board would have to, you know, have some saying that, what they're looking for. Um, depends on what they want. I think, I think to be realistic, I think I'd ask for one because it's a very competitive grant. Um, the funds are distributed based on need. Um, so I think I'd ask for one. The grant requires a memor memorandum of understanding with the school. My question is going to be, has the Board of Education been consulted? But I think you somewhat answered that by saying you've spoken with the superintendent. And, and that he had not had a chance. Right. Because this just came it's, up, obviously. It's correct. not been addressed at the board level. It's just we need to be clear that that memorandum of understanding needs to exist. Um, I, I have, was going to also ask what the funding commitment is after three years. You uh, specified that we have to commit to one additional year beyond the end of the grant. 
that's problematic in this community. Um, there is a, a long history of um, resistance to funding additional police officers. I know because when I was on this council in the past, I worked very hard to get additional officers, and it was very hard thing to do. Um, so that concerns me. It also concerns me if you talk about moving one of our current officers into that position, or even, or bringing up the idea of, and then using this grant opportunity to bring in a new officer. Once the grant is done, and we do that one additional year, whoever is in that position at the high school has seniority, which means whoever was brought on board is either out or absorbed into the budget. Um, my understanding is that there is um, some school-based policing that's already happening at the school. You mentioned Sergeant Optin Brown and that it's been very successful. Um, I'm wondering what kind of opportunities there are to expand on that. I also think that um, I, I know that our schools and schools in general are very concerned with behavioral health of our students, which requires as many social workers and school psychologists as we can have to support our students and their families. Um, and I personally would like to see funding go to the root of those causes of behavior in our schools. And I also would like to see that happening primarily in our younger grades. It's not my decision. I'm not on the Board of Education. Um, I'm sorry. My brain is really scattered right now. Those are some of my concerns. Yeah. Um, real quick. Um, under the grant, do you think that they don't anticipate then having a new officer for a whole year? You know, it, it um, they do give you a period of time. Uh, to and come I wonder if the three years started <laughs> once they were actually available, or um, when we first hire them and train them. I, 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 I apologize, we didn't get a chance to look at, at all the criteria, but I believe they give you time to get up to speed. Um, they do. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I don't have any answers. So the purpose for tonight is not to make a decision, but to, to, to get a, a sense, is this something, because at some point we have to start a dialogue, a formal dialogue, because we don't have, haven't started a formal dialogue with the, the Board of Ed. Uh, and as you know, you know, there's always been this issue of who's the appropriate uh, person to have a dialogue with the Board of Ed. Uh, you know, we, staff talks to staff, and elected officials talk to elected officials. So tonight we want to know, is there enough interest, because it was part of your goals that were adopted unanimously to, to talk about this, uh, whether we should start to try to set up a meeting or, or, or have some sort of type of formal dialogue uh, with them. Otherwise, we'll, we'll set this aside and move on to other projects. Does the application um, deadline and stuff, does that, do you think that's realistic that we could go through that for this round or is this like maybe that national announcement was to every place in the in, in the country so mm -hmm. that's the time frame everybody has and and we have some some back applications uh and some information that we have uh, yeah some of the some of the background work that needed to be done was done <coughs> for other grants you have to sign up for certain websites and you know get certain passwords and authorization to apply for grants and things like that um, but the note on the page is start early. This is more than a one day process. And it is. In your view, what, what what would be the the main benefits of having a dedicated resource officer as opposed to what we're doing now? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and do other schools, I don't know if you've looked into it, um, I'm assuming you have, but what do other schools do? Do they have uh, existing officers do double duty? Is it a shared? Um, position as far as school resource officer yes um, <coughs> um, what, what, and I didn't bring it with me tonight because I didn't think we were going to get there but uh, well, probably 18 months ago I, I put together kind of a lot of information for the superintendent <coughs> to review um, our surrounding communities um, who has school resource resource officers how many they have who funded them so I have that that I can provide the council at some later time 
uh, what I would I would anticipate if we had one school resource officer that officer would spend most of his or her time at the high school middle school complex and they might take a day and spend you know split that between the grammar school and the Robertson school maybe two days a week um, but I think the majority of time just because of the nature of the students and their needs and, um, you know, the, the impacts that I believe the school resource officer can have um, to <coughs> kind of minimize issues before they get to the point where they have to call the patrol officer. I mean, our, the last thing we want to do is arrest children, and we do everything we can not to arrest children. Um, we'd rather refer them to um, the juvenile, review, juvenile, juvenile, juvenile Review Board, and that's part of the MOA, as a matter of fact. If you do have a school resource <coughs> officer, there's a formal memorandum of agreement that you enter into with the school district about you know, how you handle disruptive behavior and things like that. I mean, it's not the uh, school resource's uh, duty or position to arrest children. That's not what they're there for. They're there to be a resource to um, the children. Um, it's the same officer, hopefully year after year, if we do get one, so they're a familiar face to uh, the, the students as they progress through the different grades. Um, and it's important to get the right person in that position too. But a bottom line answer to your question, Matt, is um, most of their time at the high school, middle school, and then maybe one, one and a half days split between the uh, grammar school and the Robinson school. Well, I for one would be in favor of at least a conversation with the superintendent, the chairperson of the Board of Ed, or staff to to at least inquire <coughs> what their well, next See steps. if they'd be interested in a joint yeah. meeting. Okay. I would ask that you do that sooner than later. Exactly. You know, if it's, you know, if it's something that they think we should pursue, there's there's still a lot of work to be done, um, and we have a lot of other. I think in the past there's been discussion of a resource officer, and <coughs> correct me if I'm wrong. I wasn't on the council. I don't think the time that it came up maybe a little Lisa. Um, and I think it was going to be a shared position. You know, that it was going to be partially even paid by the town, partially paid by the school board. Well, this would be different, and maybe we'd have to absorb the 25 percent, but. Uh, you know, that may be part of the discussion. I'm just trying to pre mm -hmm. pre preempt you, you know, just to, <laughs> if you're going to bring this up and put it in some kind of a way that might be attractive, then, you know. It just kind of to piggyback on that comment, um, I, I um, worked with, on the COPS grants when I was with the town of Manchester, and um, my feelings about them were kind of mixed because of this funding issue. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write the proposal at the time. Um, but, you know, it, it, three years goes by really quickly. And then you've got, you know, no matter how you slice and dice it, you've got the cost of another officer. Now, if there's community appetite for this, that's great. Um, if there's not, or if people, you know, start to forget, <laughs> what, you know, then then it, you know, can run into issues. So good budget time, um, and then and then of course along the way you've got the twenty five percent match, which can, you know, you're thinking about you know possibly only one. I was thinking, you know because the more police officers you add, the more match you've got to come up with. So just to point out. People may also ask what you do during summer. Well, during the summer, <coughs> you burn through a lot of overtime for vacation coverage. So it would be really good for us to to uh, have another body on during the summer. But we actually joked about training the, them as a boating officer too. But we're more joking than, than not. Um, if it's with the community, please answer. We do. We do have uh, most people like take vacations during the summer. So. But all of that should be part of this discussion with the board if we move forward at all. And there's a call. That was a quick Lisa, I actually have another question about the technicality grant. And I remember you saying that exact same thing the last time this came up about how in the summer we could use them to cover overtime um, for people on vacation. At the end of the three year grant, and then we have to keep the officer on for at least one more year. Um, does, is it also required, is there an expectation that that officer will stay on as an SRO? Like, is that part of the expectation to make sure that that program continues? It's not a requirement, but I think that's an expectation. Um, you know, I, I would hate to do it for three years, well, four years, and stop it. I mean, that, 
really. I mean, the idea of an SRO is to have somebody that's, again, familiar with the school, familiar with children, familiar with staff, familiar with issues that go on there. And I'm not saying, you know, an SRO has to stay there for four years and, you know, because sometimes that, that work is you know, really difficult and I want to come back and control for a while. Would but someone would, else become an SRO? I mean, yeah, I just I also, think, I'm sorry, I, I think the spirit of this grant is to address this issue and to address safety of our students, um, which is certainly something that I could support, but I would, I, I think to make this, um, to present this in the strongest way possible, there needs to be a commitment that we are committing to this ongoing position in our schools um, that then grows and becomes part of the culture and is really integrated as described in the grant. Um, you know, that's just, again, and, and also dovetailing with what Lisa was saying about the appetite of the community. Um, you know, and I also don't want to bring someone in to work for four years and then say goodbye. Um, I don't think that's fair to an individual either. But the reality is, is that there's always natural turnover in the apartment too. Mm -hmm. So you could just not hire another officer, you say? You could. And that takes me back to what I first said about making a commitment to the culture of why you would even consider having an SRO to begin with. It's not it to just, find time four just, years down the line to have an additional police officer. Just for the record, though, all the time they're spending now is taking away from all the things we're going to be doing. I'm not saying it's not. So that's we are a making a commitment a now that is not <laughs> legally binding anywhere. I completely understand that, John. That's another issue. I'm talking about what is the commitment that we as a town are making to our students when we talk about this grant, when we have a conversation with the Board of Education, I, I can, believe me, I spent a lot of years understanding how understaffed our police department has been, what overtime has been like, the demands on our officers, the call-ins in the middle of the night, I get that. An SRO is not the solution to that problem. An SRO is a, com a commitment to our children. Yeah, and, and obviously it's embraced so, so much so right now that the superintendent is putting a position in just a liaison with our with our minimally staffed time. Yeah. I'm not it's disagreeing with any of that. I fully understand how understaffed our town is. <laughs> I, I think this is a great starting point for. for it's both. a good place uh, to start. So we'll it's a great starting point. Well, let's a joint meeting and continue the conversation. And, and if they wish to. Right. My expectation and hope would be that it would continue, and that's why we. I mean, we wouldn't propose it just to be a three-year. Right. We didn't propose it knowing there was even a grant. Right. You know, right. So we were willing to consider um, the implications of hiring them as an employee, you know, of the town directly. So I'd say that that kind of speaks to what our at least level of initial commitment um, would be. So. So. How much time do you think would be needed for the grant writing process? As much as possible. Yeah. As much as possible. It's uh, not a day. No, it's yeah. not. <laughs> I mean, I would certainly. You know, uh, you know, we have a number of other things coming up. Um, Leah accreditation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, as much time, you know, whenever you can schedule the meeting, you just give me as much notice as you can. So I can ask. And there's no guarantees we get the grant. It's, right. it's highly competitive. Mm -hmm. um, it goes out all over the country to mm -hmm. all local, I don't know if it goes to state, but it goes to all local agencies and tribal police. Mm -hmm. So. Probably eighteen thousand <laughs> agencies. We have our own tribal nations mm -hmm. that have police force. Mm -hmm. So, uh, just one question, and maybe <coughs> for, for whomever might have an idea about this, the ongoing funding would be from the town budget, from the We board. need to have a so discussion so I know first. We need, okay, we I, think there's been, out. I think there's been a, a discussion in the past, is what I was mentioning was that they had discussed a partial, you know, from the board and partial from the town, and that, that the officer could work in the summertime doing what John was talking about, basically doing town duties on it as well. So, I mean, I don't see why that wouldn't be a, if they agree that this is something that's beneficial to the students and the safety of our students, that let's take advantage of the grant, but let's look to the future that this is something that we would like to do. So, then I think that there would be some funding from the board and some from the town. That would be my hope. Okay. Yeah. No. I just want to. And you know, just as an aside, you, the town and the, uh, particularly the superintendent has very been su very supportive of officers going up to the schools. They actually just finished uh, last week hooking up a computer uh, substation for us that we can log into our 
police computers, so if an officer, if officers want to stop in here and do reports and those types of things, they can, they can cool. do that. Okay. Very good. And we'd encourage that to continue. So. Mm -hmm. Thank you. 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 All right. Here we go. We are going to item 10C, 19-20-38, consideration, possible action on fire, transition study committee recommendations. It was supposed to take place beginning half an hour ago. So thank you, Steve and Jim, for waiting patiently. Uh, thanks for having us. Sorry, uh, we had some other people, but uh, they were structure fire in Andover. Okay. Yeah, so, well. so uh, yeah, thanks, thanks for having us. Um, we did uh, include the slides with the agenda, mm -hmm. so I'll try to be brief running through so this. presentation? Yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. if you have any questions, please, uh, please feel free to jump in. So um, on the second slide, the agenda, um, just kind of wanted to give the council a quick overview of the committee. Um, I know some of you, you know, weren't here uh, when the committee was formed a little over a year ago. And then really spent most of the time on the phase one deliverables, um, which are specifically called out in the council charge to the committee. Uh, and then finally, uh, just go over our recommendations and the next steps. Um, again, I won't read this, but this is literally uh, from the charge uh, that was written, I believe, around September of 2018, um, and, uh, and that we've been working since January of 2019. Um, again, we're here uh, to discuss the deliverables in, in the phase one. Uh, assuming we uh, are approved to continue, we'll start with the deliverables in phase two. Um, Um, quick overview of the committee. Uh, again, from the charter, or from the charge, it was designed to uh, include representation from the existing, uh, all the existing departments, uh, CVFA, NCF, NCFD, and also the town of Coventry, and then Jim, obviously, uh, as a fire administrator. Uh, so those are the committee members. We've been meeting uh, for just a year now. Um, you know, one to two times a month, plus subcommittee meetings to delve into specific details. Um, and then we did have a review with the prior council in August, uh, kind of an abbreviated uh, where we are. And uh, you know, at that point, said we'd be back in December or January to for um, full full update. And then Jim's been providing updates as well to the. Uh, <coughs> so uh, we'll get into the deliverables uh, from phase one. Again, uh, first is the SWAT analysis. Uh, SWAT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, and again, this was presented uh, in August to the council then. We had no changes, I just included it here uh, for the sake of completeness. Um, so we pause if anybody has any questions on um, this specifically. I don't have a question, it's just something I noticed, and you could certainly take this up with another point. But I noticed as one of the external harmfuls, um, maybe this goes back to what Linda Blakesley was saying during audience of citizens is uh, lack of affordable housing um, which kind of jumped out at me to see that in a fire study yeah uh, it definitely is lacking in our community but I could you just talk a little yeah. bit about how that's relevant sure and well and, and I guess let me give a little bit of background on how we actually came up with these items so um, what we actually did as a committee was try to figure out how are we going to get input from all of the members right not just the committee members the seven of us so we actually um, put this template on the whiteboards at, at both stations and invited members to just write whatever they wanted to, right? What did they feel? Um, you know, and, and you know, put check marks if they agreed with somebody else, right? And so we um, came back and then kind of, you know, uh, took the, all those comments and came up with this. So that was literally a, a comment that a member, and I don't remember what, what department it was from, right? But that, um, you know, the, the thought was that if you're trying to entice younger um, members to join the department, right, you need to have appropriate housing um, for them. <coughs> I, I do know we actually, uh, I don't want to say lost, but a few members have stepped away for, you know, um, because they didn't have housing or had a better job offer, uh, uh, more appropriate housing. Thank you. 
Uh, so one of the other first things that we started on uh, was developing some mission and vision statements. Um, we took a look at uh, other volunteer departments, uh, <coughs> other paid departments in the area. Uh, you know, Jimmy provided a lot of uh, in insight from his experience. Um, and we've actually, you know, uh, we adopted them, I think, uh, probably second or third meeting. We've made some refinements to them. Since then, uh, we had a, a leadership um, seminar uh, by a few months ago and and that uh, after attending that we decided to make a few more changes um, based on the training there um, again I won't I won't read them um, but uh, that is is our current uh, mission and vision statement there was input for each one of these also by the membership the, uh, the mission statement was provided as a template from what we agreed upon when we uh, started early on with the transition team and as we took the leadership class, the, uh, the membership that make up the people that provide the services took a look at it and said, let's shorten this up, let's add this. You know, we were looking at, you know, trying to find four words for core values and we locked into three. And, uh, somebody said, can, can we just stick with the three? So we did. <coughs> and so these are really the, the, uh, the vision, uh, the mission and the core values is uh, agreed upon and and tweaked by the people that are actually responding to the calls and, and uh, the people that make up the, uh, the essence of the department. Uh, similarly, um, we've developed uh, this draft organizational structure again, went through several iterations. There was a version presented back in August. Um, we also, as we started working on the job descriptions uh, and, and tweaking what they were responsible for, we came back. Uh, a few times and made some additional um, changes here uh, to better support you know, what uh, the job descriptions were, what we thought needed to be done, and, and the views, again, from the members of the departments. Um, so just a, a few things on, on here. Um, obviously, uh, the, the boxes that are in dotted lines are intended to be what we generally refer to as staff positions, not meaning paid or town staff, but they don't have uh, real operational roles in an emergency scene. Um, you know, they provide uh, administrative or behind the scenes um, support um, to, to make the department run smoothly. Um, and again, this is our suggestion of how the chief uh, and, and the fire administrator and the town manager would have, would be related as well uh, from an organizational perspective. We um, basically thought uh, we would divide it into three, uh, three separate operations. <coughs> Uh, each with a deputy chief uh, in charge of their respective operation. The intent is that the deputy chiefs uh, are, are effectively equal uh, in uh, skills and abilities and also supervisory uh, operational requirements on the fire ground. So we're not saying uh, that the deputy chief of EMS can only respond to or run EMS calls. They have fire, our intent here is that they have fire training uh, incident training, and they would be able to run any call as well as any of the other deputy chiefs. Uh, we did, uh, in, in, in the lower uh, officers, allow for some specialization and also for people that did not have interest in other areas to be able to have leadership roles. So, um, you know, the lieutenants of EMS do not have to have any fire training, so we do have some advancement uh, for people that only want to provide EMS. Similarly, on the fire side, right, those lieutenants do not require uh, EMTs or, or EMR certifications. Uh, we also, at, at the charge, you know, asked us to look at uh, future roles of the associations. We did spend some time on this, but you know, basically, we think that the individual associations are free to choose uh, their own roles in the future. We certainly want to support them and hope the town would support them uh, as a social. Um, you know, aspect, uh, potentially as a fundraising aspect, right, recruitment and retention, um, that sort of thing. But again, you know, it, I think, you know, as, as members and members are even today joining the Town of Coventry Fire and EMS Department, they're not necessarily joining an association. It is possible over time that the associations will, uh, you know, seek to or, or uh, cease to exist. Um, you know, we don't really see them merging, right? We see them as, as existing separately as they are until uh, such a time as they don't want to exist anymore. 
we did want to know, however, that the um, merger would require some action on their parts, right? You know, they are both incorporated uh, nonprofits uh, in the state. Those you know, bylaws uh, would have to be changed, um, and there's some you know, legal cost to that. And then also, we would likely need to consider uh, additional contracts with the town for the association's continued use of the town facilities. Couple slides on financial implications. Um, you know, basically, un unfortunately, as much as we looked, right, we really didn't see any savings as a result of this merger. Most of the savings from a merger perspective have already been executed over the past several years with combined purchasing um, and, and other work that Jimmy and, and the town have been doing. You know, uh, similarly, we don't really see any reduction in apparatus as a result of this. Uh, so, so no, no real. But it, you're increasing efficiency and better quality of service. And I, I, absolutely. All kinds of, you know, right. obviously, you hope we be able to grow the department and you know, sure. attract new people. So there's yeah. lots of benefits, maybe not straight down. Absolutely. Yep. <coughs> right. um, and so then the next slide is, you know, a, a list of potential increases <coughs> that we came up with, right? Um, and, and this is, there's a couple assumptions and caveats here. Um, you know, the first thing that I will say is that, you know, we completely understand and, and do not expect that all of these um, costs would be incurred in a single year. Um, you know, some things need to be done right away. Some things are nice to have and can be rolled out over a period of time. Um, the other assumption is you'll see a lot of these items w with an asterisk, um, make an assumption of about 60 total active members uh, from both existing departments today, um, you know, for things like uniforms and relettering uh, turnout gear, right? We uh, we expect there's a, a per unit cost for that, and, and these assumptions are based on 60 active members. Um, you know, it, it, and unfortunately, there are a lot of items on here, right? And and the departments uh, over many many years have uh, built up inventories of uniforms and, and badges and, and whatnot, right? And is that, from an operational perspective, do we have to pay for that all year one? No, but you know, being a paramilitary organization, there is a desire at, at some point to become uniform again, right? And, um, and, and we expect that, uh, that there's a significant cost to that. Personally, I think that that might be an important issue. Um, we're trying to show the unity of the, of the department, and that's one real way to do that right up front, and I think that would be. Yeah, marketing and rebranding. Yeah one fire department is going to require seed money yep. mm -hmm. in the way of what we've uh, tried and, and the, the labels that are put on it. Uh, you saw at the presentation tonight that the, uh, the chiefs making the presentation were in dress uniform. Mm -hmm. They looked sharp. The, the, the firefighters were in sort of a, a dress down type of a uniform, mm -hmm. uh, quite simply because of economics and just don't have the, out, the monies right now to outfit every single person in a, in a completely uh, full dress uniform. We would like to get to that point at, at some point in time. So when they're marching down the street representing the uh, the town and the pride that they have wearing one department under one unified banner, it's uh, that's going to require um, some funding mm -hmm. for uniforms and apparatus, uh, uh, things like stationery. We, we've already worked on changing that. That's not really a cost issue, but we're trying to get a new label out there to represent the town of Coventry Fire and EMS Department as one unified uh, response agency. And uh, you know, just use last night's structure fire as another example of just how well they really do work together. And uh, so some things are already happening. Great. Organizationally, we just want to... Uh, I, I just was voicing my support because yeah. I, you know, I think it's important. Uh, I really do. Um, it's going to be helpful, I think, to make the transition. And <coughs> this is a big step, and we're really appreciative of all the time, work, and effort that you guys are putting into it. And we're all—I be think the whole council is behind your efforts, and you know, so we're going to be supportive, I believe. Well, from from the paid guy at the table, <laughs> uh, I really think that the, the volunteers that have poured their time and energy into the meetings, the subcommittee meetings, uh, doing a lot of the paperwork generating job descriptions, changing job descriptions. Yep. Uh, my hats go off to them. Okay. Just they, they've done a phenomenal job and I think that uh, the work product that's being presented to you tonight is reflective of, of their efforts. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's impressive too. Yep.
And any thoughts or comments, questions on the increases? Um, we also wanted to look at um, you know, how do we possibly get into this uh, merge state operation as quickly as possible. Um, you know, we had job descriptions that were quite detailed and, uh, you know, might seem uh, a bit difficult for people in, in certain roles right now. So we thought to, to allow us to get operating together and then quickly, we would propose uh, an interim uh, slate of officers, right, uh, that would let, uh, let us see how the organization works, give people an extra year to review the job descriptions and take any additional courses or certifications that they need to become eligible um, for the permanent role. So, you know, as the slide says, basically, you know, we're, we're suggesting um, a single interim uh, slate of officers that would occupy the, the roles for one year. Uh, they would be coterminous, uh, all, all of them together, and then at the end of that, they would, we would use that time to uh, select the permanent officers uh, who you know, may or may not be also is this initially done as like an election? Of well, the well uh, not not our suggestion. Right. Um, and, and actually, in a couple slides, I, I do have some some thoughts. <coughs> so on the on the next slide, we took a look at uh, term uh, terms for the officers. Right. And we specifically just want to mention you know not term limits, but terms. Um, right, and, and we tried to strike a balance between, uh, especially at the upper levels, having some continuity, but also allowing for advancement, uh, especially in the, in the lower roles. Um, you know, so, so again, chief four years, uh, all three deputy chiefs uh, for three years apiece, the captains uh, two years, and then um, six lieutenants, uh, and, and the thought there was that the initial six would actually be uh, a one-year term so that the entire slate of captains and lieutenants doesn't turn over at the same time. So they would be a one-year term and then they would be offset from them. And then I think uh, what you're asking for, you know, as the actual selection process is on the next slide. Um, so what the committee is recommending is that for an interim chief, again, for that one-year period, the transition committee, as well as the existing town of Coventry Fire Board, uh, make a recommendation um, to the town manager as, as to who should be appointed for that uh, interim chief. And then from that level down, um, the chief would be responsible for appointing their subordinates and, and so on and so forth that way, which is basically what, what we were proposing for the permanent solution as well. Um, like ratified, like in other words, uh, the Board of Fire Officers and the transition team would jointly meet and make a recommendation to the town manager for one interim fire chief. Mm -hmm. That one interim fire chief would be the recommendation of those two bodies and uh, would be brought to the council for ratification. So then the chief and the town manager would then look at the next layer, the three deputies, and the chief would pick those three deputies ratified by the town manager. And then the deputies and the chief, those four individuals would make up the command staff and they would fill out the remaining captains and lieutenants, engineers, so that this interim organizational structure um, would be operating for the course of a year, which would give them and everybody else in the department the time to look at the specific requirements of the of permanent positions and then have a year's time by which to seek uh, either training in those positions or uh, put together a resume that would qualify them for those positions. And did we get into time frames? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Plus so second. maybe that's phase, <laughs> phase two. But we've already talked about some potential time frames uh, if the council approves the, uh, the phase one report. So just, you know, this is kind of following the same model we have on the police department where I hired the I, select the police chief and then have that ratified by the council. Uh, and then the chief picks his uh, sergeants and I have to approve them. So it's, it's based on kind of a very consistent model that we have. So we have expanded control. Uh, for, excuse me, for the permanent roles, right, we also uh, expect to use uh, 
point space system to kind of narrow pull down. Again, very common in public safety organizations, right? You get uh, X number of points per year of service or X number of points per for certain certifications uh, up to a maximum level. There's an oral, would be an oral uh, interview process as well for the chief. Um, and, uh, and, and, and we would have that year of the interim role to get all of that through so that the uh, permanent so that, uh, permanent people are in place. That selection process would then be written into the policy manual and followed from that point forward for any other promotional positions that come up going forward. Would there be an ability to make changes in term of their two-year term, four-year terms, if the chief so chooses, or how's that work? I mean, I, I would say yes, uh, you know, subject to meeting minimum requirements and, and you know, and appropriate you know if process. In process. Right. Well. I mean, you know, we also expect that at some point, someone in a role is going to have to leave in the middle of their term, right? And there is a process by which people may move up, and then you have to, you know, fill in lower levels or whatnot. Sure. We could do acting positions, or we could then put the job description out and say, you know, due to so and so's departure, we're going to uh, we're going to fill our position for the role of fire captain, just for an example. So anybody that meets the minimum requirements of the fire captain would then follow that uh, process and procedure that we were drafting into a, a unified one department uh, policy meeting. Uh, final um, item from the charge was uh, addressing recruitment and retention. <clears throat> um, I think we, we did want to highlight a lot of the work that's been done to date, both by you know, Jim and the, uh, and the fire board, um, you know, to, to improve things, improve morale, and, and recruit and retention already. You know, we, we've held additional open houses. Uh, we have someone that's working with UConn specifically in training to train students. Um, we, you know, not only do we provide emergency services uh, at community events, we're trying to also, you know, uh, staff them from a community relations perspective, right? So, uh, you know, using our uh, public education uh, funds to, you know, hand out flyers and, and whatnot and have, have multiple reasons for being there, really. Um, you know, there's also discussions on increasing uh, incentives uh, for, for volunteers. Um, the, the low SAP increases uh, length of service awards program. Um, you know, potentially, I believe that's been capped at $150 a month since its inception 20 Long time years ago, plus years ago. Um, and then also, you know, another common incentive for volunteer firefighters uh, is uh, uh, property tax abatements. Uh, so, you know, many different things that we're looking at with different levels of cost and, and coming from different budgets as well. Um, you know, there's also uh, people looking at in increasing uh, call response incentives, right? Um, we do that on the uh, EMS side today, right? Do we increase that on the fire side as well in the future? Um, we want to increase the visibility of the junior firefighter program, get that back uh, up and running again, right? And you see in the org chart, we had somebody dedicated for that. Um, you know, additional training opportunities, uh, social media, right, again, something that the fire board's been doing already. Um, and then also increasing public education, right? We've uh, also got a person on our organization to that. Uh, so, so finally, you know, the recommendation from, from our committee uh, is that the council approve the completion of our phase one uh, deliverables and, and authorize the start of phase two. Uh, we did actually, as part of phase one, think we needed to get a little bit further into phase two. Uh, for example, the job descriptions, right? We felt we needed to have those done to fill out the org chart, to fill out the selection process, right? So that's actually pretty, pretty much on. complete yeah. already. Um, we've uh, already written training policies uh, for the new organization that have already been adopted. Uh, by the town uh, fire board as well, um, and they've also done a lot of work to get a lot of other policies already written. So a lot of the phase two work is is well underway. Might need a little bit of review, um, but but can be uh, finished uh, pretty completely, uh, pretty quickly. And and as a result, we basically feel that we could uh, enter into that interim merge state with an interim slate of officers, um, no later than uh, July first of this year. 
uh, you know, potentially to coincide if it made sense uh, with the town's fiscal year. Um, and then you know, that would put us into permanent uh, state and permanent roles on July 1st, 2020. Wow. Yeah. Thank you so I'd much. like to, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for all the work from the whole yeah. group that, that put in all the time. Like you said, Jim, you're paid, but they had to dump in. Mm -hmm. They're used to putting lots of volunteer time in, I know. It's amazing. But, it's just but this so looks fun. really great. Thoughtful. Yes. Well, thought out. So tonight they're formally looking for you to accept phase one, mm -hmm. and, and next on the lawn on phase two. Anyone have questions? Is there a formal uh, motion? Or? I don't think there's a motion. On this. It's no, it's a possible action item if you want to make a motion. So it's ten what? Ten C. So we just do it. it really do is it. Just their move to move to, to approve phase, phase one. one. FTC, FTSC Council Phase 1 report. Second. And, and authorize them to move to Phase 2. Perfect. All right, so Sorry. we're going to have Matt and Lisa Conan. That was John's here. motion. John. I started it and Matt finished it. <laughs> oh, I seconded it then. Give John the. Give John. Are we okay with that? John handed me the motion. Matt Senior seconded I, I, I it. I supported it. I just wanted the right language in the. <laughs> I understand. All right, any questions on the motion or discussion? Besides how much we appreciate We're just excited. the yeah. hard work, I know, and that you have moved ahead. And some of us were sitting here 10 years ago, and if you had told us that today you'd be bringing us here, we would have told you you were crazy. Actually, <laughs> right? I mean, I hate to say, but you know, at some point we said merger 2020. <laughs> Did wow. we actually? Yes. Wow. Well, because of the contracts, too. And, it's like you have yeah, 20, 20, 20 uh, foresight. Vision, right? Yeah. Will, will, will there be contract issues? Because I know one of the contracts don't get up till next next uh, December, correct? Uh, yeah, all those uh, all those things could be taken care of in uh, a mutual agreement. So you'll recall that uh, we had a little bit of a MOU. Are uh, we going to do this? Kind of held off, saying we're so close to this. Mm -hmm. uh, let's hold off instead of negotiating an MOU. Right. Let's just go right. for it because yeah. the committee. Uh, and the membership seemed to be ready for that. Uh, so we would instead need to start discussion with their existing contracts uh, and um, the new relationships with the associations. So take the bear down. Our contracts with them. Kind of, our contracts with, with the associations. Some of that we actually would have another full year in this interim state to, right. to do, but we'd have to at least have an extension saying maybe these sections of the contract cross them out. Here's an interim one year contract so we can get a little bit more experience. But I I have, <coughs> on behalf of the council, and hopefully I'm, I'm correct, have said that we believe that just associations still serve a vital role, mm -hmm. that we would need to want them to still have office space and still have the use of the halls and, and so forth as a priority user. Because um, the buildings being used is good, a good thing. Uh, and if the, if the association's having a, an event there, Many of them are firefighters, and when the call goes off, they're there, mm -hmm. which is a really good thing. Uh, so uh, we would start instead to work on a draft of some type of agreement to bind us over that, that year and start to establish a relationship with the associations that choose to still uh, be around. Um, and in the budget process, we obviously are scrambling to start looking at some of these options in terms of the, the phasing in of some of this transitional costs uh, and uh, some of the incentives uh, that we need to, to do. Uh, the, you know, many towns and gyms at my request has been doing uh, a comparison of how we compare to other things. A lot of fire departments all have different incentives and we have to look at um, kind of the value of those incentives and what incentives, the key word of this incentive is that if it's not working as an incentive, then we, uh, we evaluate it. So, um, we, you know, there's going to be some of those things. We may not be able to do everything at one year uh, uh, because obviously there's going to be fiscal pressures. Uh, and, I, and I think as long as they know things are coming and that they're being listened to, I believe you know, progress can be made. Uh, our length of service work program, we're changing to a January 1 calendar right. versus Mar calendar March 1. Versus, uh, so if we decide to do something there, that would be a half kind of well, I don't know, that's a, is that an annual payment? Ah. <laughs> we might be able to negotiate something, but, uh, 
but um, good track. And <laughs> you know, there's taxation issues that we need to talk about on the other. Um, right now, they're not exempt from federal taxes. They're currently exempt, I think, from state taxes. And I think the state just state income taxes. I think the state just actually increased the level. Right. There's been federal legislation proposed to make that tax exempt, although it has not been passed. It's been brought up in the House of Representatives. So it was there and then eliminated. Uh, so, hmm. so some, you know, everything was eliminated a couple of years ago. <laughs> but uh, so different people may want a different menu. And I haven't seen a cafeteria plan yet, which would be really hard to administer, uh, but not out of the question that, because uh, even the, the property tax credit, we do have people who A, don't own property, B, live over the town line, mm -hmm. uh, and, and those are, you know, you have to be careful not, not slighting somebody. So all those things are, are issues. Well, it also encourages them to move into town, which is a benefit to the department. So it, it brings up the affordable housing <laughs> question. <laughs> right. Do you happen to know it's what the uh, legislation is titled or the number is in the House right now? It's an HR bill. I don't have the number. It Isn't was, it a Larson? Uh, yeah. Bill? Could, could I ask you guys to um, look at the recommended um, expenditures? No, no, you don't have to look at it right now. Look mm -hmm. soon so that you could, if we were to incorporate pieces of that mm -hmm. in our budget, what well, we would know what your highest priorities would be. Sure. That would be, mm -hmm. that would be great. Mm -hmm. That's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Okay. No other questions? Because we may not be able to do it all, but we'll try. <laughs> All those in favor of approving the motion on the floor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed or abstain? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry we kept you late. Yeah. Got to you late. <laughs> Appreciate your time. All right. Next on our agenda is acceptance of minutes. Oh, oh no. <laughs> we cannot accept the minutes. Our no. December 23rd <laughs> well. ones. And last time we had approved at least pages one through five, and then we jumped back in and we approved some pieces of the tolls, the no tolls resolution. So if you start, so I there's believe. There's still changes on one through five that need to be made. More? I thought we. I, I think we, we voted on those. Well, there's some that I thought we actually changed, but they're not in. The, they're not in what I got. Maybe you guys have it. They're in the minutes of, of that of the last. Oh, oh I see. So they still the appear to be the same. Yes. I see. Yeah. They uh, are. They're in the minutes of the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought they would have made. Now they'll be in the minutes of the minutes of the minutes. Yeah, third time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So does somebody have something to begin with on page six? I have one. Go ahead. Mark. Well, the ZOE, ZOE needs to be changed, right? I thought we did that already. We didn't do that. It's marked. I, yeah. I marked it. Okay. Remember? <laughs> and is the if changed to it? Um, the environment, item six, fifth line up from the bottom. Last word. Little lots and if these lots. Yeah. And it, I it should be. So it's just an it. That's it. That's it. It? Oh. It. Yeah. IT. Okay. And on that page, you also have Peter Hawkins. Yep. <laughs> what is that? A two C. Yes. There aren't very many. Thank goodness. I had a couple. Go ahead, Lisa. Uh, page six, the third paragraph, third sentence. Um, the acronym CBPG should be inserted after the word "the," so it's clear which grants do equal. C, what is it? C? C, C, D, C, D, D, G. Community Development Block Grant. Correct. Correct. That was that. Page 6, 3, Thank you. Um, same paragraph five lines down, insert the same acronym CDBG in the sentence saying this is just to apply for the grant, just for clarity. And then um, that, the last paragraph on that page, uh, it's under public safety. Uh, the second sentence is mi um, missing the attribution as to who made that statement. Was that you, Matt, senior? 
the first line, first sentence? The second sentence. The BOE chose not to. I don't, I don't recognize that. And then you're, you're speaking next, right? Ken said that it is preconceived notion of using research software. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, to not come and discuss the resource officer. That's what that first sentence was about. Okay. Remember, we had uh, so we had asked for them to meet, and then they, they just chose not to meet with us about it. But they just never came back to us. So um, somehow that sentence must be related to that. I'm guessing. I believe so. I, just, I was confused. That's why I, I just thought it should be added. Just, just not to discuss um, the just resource the officer with the council. How's that? I think she she was just looking to have the attribution added. I didn't say these words in this way, though. That's what I'm telling you is that we were talking about the word of it coming to discuss a resource officer with the council. So if they corrected it, I don't, I don't recall, so I could be wrong here. But uh, Madam Ryan, she did note it. The board of ed chose not to come to the council to discuss the school resource officer and instead focus on improving security. Oh, yeah, which they would both be related, but that's fine. Uh, build, building security? Okay. Yeah, better on. Uh, senior noted that the Board of Education chose not to come <coughs> to the council. To discuss a resource officer and instead focused on building security. I mean, it wasn't disparaging, it was just a historical <laughs> statement. Okay, we'll move on to page seven yeah. So there are corrections noted in pencil right. already that you're deeming acceptable. We'll move from there. <laughs> All right, the, the ones that are in red, but for many of you. Oh, you right. print yeah. it in red. Yep. <laughs> yeah, but they didn't print in red. Yeah. <laughs> You have there anything additional? Well, you have a question mark next to one of the cor corrections you made. We, um, item 10, no one else voted, so the motion passed, question mark. Is yeah. it not clear that that passed? Well, it's not really clear. If Jim it, McLaughlin right. made a motion and he was the only person who right. passed. Yeah. Yeah. But that was actually accurate, but I think there was yeah. a question as to whether yeah. it was accurate. No one voted against. Maybe. Right. So it was one to nothing and it passed? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, that was a... <laughs> one, in, one in favor? No. We understood it. Yeah. Um, change no one else No, voted. no, it's just the same. <laughs> yeah, just right. No one else voted. Just no. don't put my question mark in there, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah. Take, just take the question mark out. That's all it was. Yeah. So you fit an ED there? So you're not changing down here. We already did those? No. Okay. Correct, <laughs> yes. Yeah, the changes <laughs> and no change. There's a change to the corrections <laughs> in red pen. Okay. So. In the hopes of expediting things. I have one second paragraph on the governmental transparency. Uh, the last full line across there, it starts with the word misunderstanding. Mm -hmm. I think it should just be plural. How Misunderstandings. I'm sorry, under the second paragraph under oh, governmental okay. transparency. And I'm sorry, just above the bullets. I'm okay. sorry. Misunderstandings. Yeah, plural. I think it's, uh, and, um, I had one on, oh, did you finish? I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Um, uh, page seven, the fourth paragraph, um, which is item 10, the third line in the sentence beginning, he moved to talk about who he is should be specified. <coughs> Jim McLaughlin attended the fire, the fire minister attended the meeting, he moved, so it's speaking of Jim McLaughlin. I think that would clarify that whole thing. No, it says it right, the sentence right before, I mean, is that not? He moved to talk about? He was oh, just saying the sentence before. The sister related to that McLaughlin Jim McLaughlin, the fire minister, attended a regional meeting. So, Jim, what if we just change the name? I read it to say Jim. It could also mean John. Yep. Yeah, why, don't, why don't we just take <laughs> so. C and put Jim? Jim. Jim. Perfect. That's fine. Um, and then the final paragraph on that same page. Um, After I, the bullets? 12. Mm -hmm. yeah, uh, which is in eight lines up from the bullet. Well, from the bottom in the sentence um, that starts with Conant Hopes, um, I just wanted to note that there's some information there that um, I, I thought was relevant that's um, missing from my remarks. Um, I had noted that the school readiness grant had been funded for more than 20 years by the state. Um, and also, um, 
I, there's an attribution to the sentence immediately following that one starting uh, with market rates that's missing. So Conant hopes that they would continue to provide grants for early childhood education as they have for the past 20 years? Exactly. 20 plus years? 20 plus years. So I think it's charging market rates was a way to put money into the fund. Is that kind of what that sentence is supposed yes, to say? Yes, I think so. so. Mm -hmm. Market rates. So it does say yeah, that already. Just, sure just put charging in front of market rates? Charging market rates? Is that something you said? It, it could be. So I'll take it, sure. Matt Senior. So. Charging market rates was worth it. Just a way of building up the funding. I don't know which ever is appropriate. Charging market rates or changing? Charging. 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 So there t it's the discussion is charging tuition to people for the preschool for regular education students. Mm -hmm. I want to say market rate tuition. Yeah, that would be helpful to clarify. Yes. Anything else on that page? Yeah, I guess you could say for regular education students. Has <laughs> <laughs> all that said? I'm happy with whatever you said. <laughs> no, I'm not, I, I, I don't know. Okay, KD. Uh, end of second paragraph. Mm -hmm. Needs a set of quotes to close the quotes. <coughs> yeah, after the word relief. Um, and then two paragraphs below that, second paragraph under economic development at the end of the first line where it says farmers should be an apostrophe after the S and farmers. What's the liquor trap? What was the change? Lip trap. trap. I'm not yeah. sure. Oh, it's L I P T T R A P. I P T. Mm -hmm. Two T's? No. Mm -mm. No. No. Okay. So just take out the P E R. Correct. I'm in that same paragraph, the last full line. Just change R to is. I think that's a little bit easier. Three tiered home occupation regulations, which are, which is cutting edge. I think, oh, Julie, yeah. you had okay. done that, right? That's fine. I think, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> You're reading hers. Like, just something happened last time. It happened. So, so get it read there. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, what was that one that I didn't? It's already done. It's already oh, done. Oh, okay. Mine are, don't show up in red, so sometimes it doesn't look like they're doesn't anything there. <laughs> so I have in the second paragraph under economic development again, um, in the one, two, three, fourth line down, that line starts village partnership program that I think is just be plural for means. It just says mean right now, mean providing training programs. Um, yes, yes. What's that? I must have done it after I did it because it's written in mine too. <laughs> Got it. Well, if I'm stealing one of yours, I apologize. No, it's not at all. <laughs> well, do you want to just um, cross out the word me? The second me? That provides training programs. Uh, no, no, no. How, however you fix it, I'm fine with. Just adding the letter S gets it done. Works. But means, okay, add the S. Um, so two lines below that, two lines below that, and this is like a substantive, not non-grammar type thing here. It says, Eric Trott chairs that committee and businesses pay $950 each year to be part of the Main Street Group. No. I just, right, exactly. I don't, it's, that's not how that works, right? No. Can you reward no, that? The council, the, provides, the council provides $950, doesn't it, John? Isn't it? Yeah, I'm not so sure it's 950 but it's in that neighborhood. I thought that's what it was said. I mean, it's not each business, is it? Right. No, no. It's, it's the group, right? The town, so the town fund. Awkward. I think yeah. the, the town, town funds. Fund. Like no, it's the town funding. It. The town funds that money, whatever it is. Right. Right. They're not putting in. Right. No. So the. Does there need to be an exact dollar figure, or could it say something along the lines of? Oh. Eric Trot tra chairs that committee, and the town it pays each year to be part of the Main Street group. That would do it. Yep. Capital town. Mm -hmm. um. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the question. Yes, yes, I'm done. This page. Um, 
Um, I just had one on that um, page in the second paragraph, that third sentence that says, um, El Sessor mentioned that town hall has a saying and that we try to find a way to be yes, but if that can't be found, the answer is a no. Uh, could to we just clean that up a little bit? Just take out the B. And just, to yeah. get to yes. Find to a get way to way. yes. Thank you. We try to find a way to get to yes. And I know it's, it's you taking it for very minutes. Yeah, I'm I might have said that. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did. Actually, but. Sounds nice. like you. Page nine. Are we ready to? Yeah. It actually looked pretty good to Lisa. me. Oh. See this one over here it says opposing. Should that be opposes? That's I the one I was going for. Oh, mm -hmm. I think it's your statement. So. We're still on page eight. No, we're no, nine. nine. No, page nine. Oh, the tenth line one, down two, or so on the four, far five, right. Six, the word seven, opposing. Eight, three, six, ninth line down. Nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, last therefore opposes. Balance the projects significant operating deficits in the next three years. It therefore opposes okay, yeah. using one and a half billion dollars of the budget reserve fund. Anything else on page nine? Anybody else? No, it's better. I didn't. Okay. Um, on the on the, the last two sentences, I think um, it was John Hand um, who asked those questions about uh, slapping them at the same time we have our hands out for money, and it's possible that any grants that Coventry is up for wouldn't be considered. Yeah, Williams didn't say that. Yeah, I don't. Think so. I do recall saying something along those lines. I would never say something like that. <laughs> <laughs> never. Probably not. Okay. Page 10. The end is near. Did Laura come on <laughs> January 14th or sooner? I thought she was coming on the 6th in my head. I don't know why I thought that when I read it. Is this January 14th she returned? Where are you? Just above 2. I know. I thought it was earlier than that. Is that the right page? I'm just asking about the 14th. date. Yeah. And what's this one up here? Tax? Something. Was she gone that one again? It, it should be the word I bag should be inserted. Bag the word D A G. Well, the fourteenth is well after the holiday. It would have been on Monday after. Isn't it bag tax? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Not that's what we we're just saying. You know, fourteenth. Yes, not the tax bag. Tax bag. Oh. Good. So we could approve as amended. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! I've got a couple. I still got a couple. Still got more. Just a couple. Might go back to six. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I thought it was the six. If I said it, I said it. Yeah. So. Okay, John Hand. Um, yes, in that, let's see, one, two, three, four, fifth paragraph. That's the first big paragraph at the top of the page. In the one, two, three, four, five, sixth line down at the end of the line, it says, Hand stated that there was some grants that missed out on. I think I said that Hand stated that, that there was some grant, singular, so cross out the S, that, and then add the word we, Missed out on. This is about someone not on the council that did something, if I remember the conversation. They were on the council at the time, but they weren't speaking for the council. Let's see. Okay. That's all I have. Okay. We corrected the members present too, right? Yes. Earlier? Think that was in the first. Yeah. Okay. This, that's right, that's the one where I was there. Okay. Yeah. Right. Can we make a motion ready to approve? Move to approve the minutes as amended. December 23rd. December 23rd. Second. Second. Richard, Richard second. second. All those in favor of approving the minutes for tonight's additional changes, please say aye. 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 Great. Okay, next is our minutes of January 6th. I didn't have any changes. <laughs> 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 so on page one, an audi audience of citizens. Yeah. Um, it's Kathleen Brightwisher, not Kathy. I think I took that from her statement, but mm -hmm. I don't think she's ever referred to herself as Kathleen. No. I always hear her refer to herself as Kathleen. Mm -hmm. John, did you want to mention the other thing? Yes, I would like <laughs> to. I would like to mention that in those in the. Um, Paragraphs about Kathleen Brightonwisher, Carolyn Arabolas, and Emma Eaton. Each of their, each of those end with a statement that says her statement, which is included as an attachment to these minutes. I cannot find those attachments in these minutes at all. 
I checked and double checked and triple checked. They're not part of this. I scanned them in front of them. Yeah, so actually, I, don't, I don't know where that they're actually on file in the town clerk's office. They were sent us a separate file, so <coughs> I guess they weren't copied. <coughs> so she, she sent them. Yeah, I, I, so is that they like get attached yes. responsibility <coughs> now or the town clerk's Well, Laura was on vacation when they gave I, I understand kind of how no, it so happened, but is, can that be? fixed in some way through There's this process? Where the official minutes are, they're already on, on file. But if somebody looks online... But how about yeah. electronically on our website? We can change the attachment to include them. We can? Yes. Yeah. That sounds good. So do I contact how do we Laura request that? and Lori? You have to republish the agenda. Yeah, you can do that. <coughs> Is that a thing we can do, Julie? I say yes. Julie I says will. yes. John? <laughs> <laughs> I will follow up. Thank you. Is there a way for me to include it in the minutes to begin with, so it's not separate files? I just right, because we're amending the minutes right now, right? I didn't come back in Adobe. But how about next, like these minutes yeah. for tonight? Yep. We'll, we'll review those and then going forward. We'll make I was sure just we'll trying to get the file. I understand. And then I was like, oh, there's file, and I walked yeah. them down to Tom Clerk's office and add these. That's okay. That's why we spend hours going through this. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, and so thank you. Have, it's going to kill me. Uh, it's actually, um, it's kind of throughout here. I, I was um, sick during the last meeting, and um, I somehow I'm voting. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, record is voting, and so if you could just remove my name awesome. from wherever you see. Yeah. Yeah. And this this date, yeah. so page three. It's every. It's every. Yeah, it's just throughout wherever there's yeah, a vote. wherever there's a vote, and some of them don't have me in there. <laughs> a lot of them do. Yeah. I kind of you know. I'm staying sometimes. <laughs> I can stay home. Yeah, All right, stop. are we good with page one? Um, well, I'll just bring up one that happens on all the pages. <clears throat> And, and this isn't necessary, it's not part of our thing. I just wonder if it'll become confusing if that's the thing. It looks like the document name down at the bottom is mm -hmm. PZC and, the, and then the date of a, of a PZC meeting. So it's the name of the file. Again, I don't, it's not really part of our minutes, but I think it's kind of confusing to have it on there. Yeah. Yeah. Again, when somebody looks at this in the future, I know right now why, you know, just the document names get mixed around. But so that, that's all I have to say about that. I'm not sure how to fix that or whatnot. It's a footnote? Yeah, it's 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 uh, the bottom of every page. Yeah, it's in the footer, the, the document name and all that. Yeah, but I update it and then I don't know how, how it looks, it gets back. And I print it and save it again and it says, says table of uh, PZC. No, it says town council when I save it and send it and then it's somehow oh, reprints. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know. I'll take out the footnote. <laughs> okay, page two. Yes, page two. Oh, look. There are lots of corrections on that page already. But those are the corrections. Yeah, I, know. So I didn't see any. Okay. <laughs> so can we move on to page three, which is 75% corrections? <laughs> I'm more like 66%. Yeah. Okay, so number one is to remove opponent, which mm -hmm. we already done. Anything else on page three anybody wants to? We're still doing corrections. <coughs> Then. Um, yes, I have some under six reports. The third bullet. There's a reference to Chief Palmer that says Chief Palma. Mm -hmm. So just fix that. And then just beyond that, it says we'll present on pre-up. I'm pretty sure it's pre-up, yeah. P-R-E-A, which is what we talked about tonight. Mm -hmm. So actually, it spells out right after that. Right. No, I I, I know. I get it. Then. Five. You have two comments. Three. Two mm -hmm. comments. Three. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> heard that. <laughs> There's one. one. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, I, I have a question, and I guess now would be the time to do it. Under the second bullet there, under 6B, in the second sentence it says, about a comment in the January 2nd, 2020 Journal Inquirer article about the opposition parties being at odds. That's what she said. Uh, Thomas commented on that. Is that, I'm just basically asking you, Lisa, are those, is that, a, 
verbatim, like, is that a... Um, I, I so thought it was a little more nuanced than that. So what I was talking about was that um, the article referenced uh, comments, uh, the letter that was published on the RTC website, and in it, that senior had stated that um, our platforms are vastly at odds. And I was saying that that felt very um, hyperpartisan and divisive, and that's not what we were seeing at the table. That publicly at the table, we were seeing that we were working together, and I hope that that was where we were going, the direction we were going, as opposed to right. So there's what was published on that site. There's a little nuance there with what it says here and what you just said. I think it's what you just said does match my recollection. But her next two sentences bring it around to. A so it has to do with the, the platforms of the parties. I think you probably would do that. Okay. Party platforms are not. Right? I, I don't know. I mean, that doesn't. That, I wasn't right saying that they're not at odds. I was saying that that statement felt right, but it was partisan and, and that, that didn't reflect what was happening in public at the table. Right, but it was about the platforms themselves and not the parties. Like, um, I don't know. Uh, I guess I, platforms are whatever. Parties, but we can, we can say the platforms. I just, I, I, when I read it, I had a question. I don't know if I used the word platforms, but I, my concern was over the comment about being vastly at odds. Mm -hmm. That that was on, on the website, but that what was happening in public was uh, not reflecting that, and that I hoped we would continue in that direction. Parties, the two parties? So sure. Or the two-party platforms. The, the I mean, two it is. Parties being at odds. Or the two-party platforms being at odds. I think. Uh, I mean, Matt, you wrote the thing. I mean, what I was. I the essence of what I was comment. trying to say is that 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 was a very partisan statement. It is not what we are seeing at the table. What we are seeing publicly. So I hope that what we are seeing publicly is truly where we're going, as opposed to. Thank you. What was being reported, which is, the reporting was accurate because that's what. Letter said about the two party platforms being at odds. That's what the bottom mean. line is I was saying that that was a very hyper partisan comment that was made in that senior's statement, and that I hope that that was not the direction we were going website. because, <coughs> right, the statement on the Republican Town Committee website, and that I hope that was not the direction we would end up going. This is right now we've this been working is well referencing together. a journal and choir article, right? right which which internally to references to the other thing, I think, right? Right. Okay. The bottom line was, uh, really, is what I've been saying, is that the, the, the statement was partisan in saying that we are vastly at odds with one another. Publicly at the table, we have been working together, and I hope that that's how it continues. And I agree. That is what I was saying. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for bringing it up. Because you're right, it wasn't quite captured in that. In so, so JR article about the plat the statement was partisan and no. No? <laughs> I think she said hyperpartisan. <laughs> no, something. Uh, so I actually went back to review the video. Um, so what I said was that Matt had posted a message on the RT web, RTC website stating that the Democrats' platform is vastly different, basically, from the Republican platform. And I was saying that we have started off in a very collaborative manner, at least what I have seen <coughs> at the table, and that I was worried that such comments would undermine the collaborative work that we're doing, because it feels hyperpartisan. that we have good work going on publicly. <coughs> That's at about one hour, 50 minutes into the video, because we were still talking. And that's so important that you had to go look that up. I'm sorry, um, I, I brought it up. <laughs> well, you had to read, go re revisit the You know, the when, the, when the question is being asked, I go back and look so I can make sure that what I'm saying is Accurate, and I'm not trying to rewrite history. I know. Minutes aren't for rewriting history. 
Okay, are we good with page five? Could you could add junior to my name under 6D. And three comments. Oh, yeah, you're on. Yep. Okay. You're there. Okay, page six. Just some comments to yeah. remove. Four. Five. It's like a superpower. Page seven. Five comments to remove. <laughs> Just that doesn't sound right. right. I'm sorry. Just, no, I don't six. mean anything by it. <laughs> they had to add me last meeting. Six so. was just <laughs> true. I feel your pain. Seven was just comment. Page eight. I don't have anything on page eight. Matt? I do. Okay. okay, moving right along. Page nine. One and one at the top. Yep. It's just a spelling thing. One L. I think there's just one L in counseling. So the very end of the very, very top line. So you won't get the L out of here. Yeah. Wow. Then, yes. <laughs> yes. That's, that's a theme I've heard. The same word appears in the fifth line down. Yeah. Yep. Anything else? Page 10. I am <clears> under the third bullet under unfinished business. Oh. The six line up way on the right, resulting in award winning. It says aware winning. We just need to change the E to a D. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Which I think Third you get the wrong bullet, 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 maybe. Third Third bullet. Bullet. This is fiscal Third responsibility. Bullet. Yeah. Okay. One, Third bullet two, down. Three, four, five, six line down. Oh, you set up from the yeah, bottom. You set up on the bottom. One, two, three, four, five, Sorry. six. Third Third one up. Got it. Aware should be awarded. Anything else on that page? Well, if you're going to fix award <coughs> and then winning, should you hyphenate it with winning? No. Award winning? No. no. Underline? Page 10. A. <laughs> Do you want, I'm going to start quoting the example. Go back to being Why commas honest. matter. Yes. I think of you, I see plenty of Facebook posts, and there are plenty of people explaining why commas matter. <laughs> see, there you go. We'll, we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll put you some out and bring them in for next time. <laughs> Pass them around. <laughs> okay, page 10. I have one under eight of the second line of the paragraph, not the title. Okay. It, said, it starts with the words, must be approved. It says to Coventry to take part. I think it's for Coventry to take part. And on the bottom, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I have twice. It's, yeah, it's duplicated. Yeah. There's a duplicate motion. In the whole, that whole section. Mm -hmm. on the next page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. There's no comments there. <laughs> Okay. Lisa, you weren't there for any of those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Page On, 11. Oh. Under the first line, under where it says no toll resolution discussion, mm -hmm. it says Thomas' issue was to use over a, a $1 billion of the fund. I think it was, it was not the use. use. No, it was not to use, right? Right. Thomas, uh -huh. Yeah. Or was it their My proposal? There's lots use. of ways to reword it to get her. Their meeting. proposal to use, maybe? I think it was Thomas said she was the use Let's of let over one billion dollars of the fund. <laughs> sure. Go ahead, Lisa. <laughs> was it really a dollar amount like that? Yes. Then we were working on percentages. No, no, no. That was in the resolution. Thomas is I think it should be Thomas's concern was the proposed use of over a billion dollars of the fund as proposed by the Republican legislators. That was the conversation, that that was not, that I didn't feel that that was a wise state way to solve the problem. So did you say over a billion or it's 1.5 billion actually? So I if you want the exact amount, I said I thought that's what you used, I thought that's how I recalled you saying. 1.5 billion is fine. One. <laughs> Precise is fine. <laughs> <laughs> no, because that's not no, because we had further discussion. Feeling evil. And in in the amendment, I 
I, I proposed. I, I said specifically 1.5 billion. Whether I said 1.5 billion when we were chatting or I said or one over one this billion. is not the amendment that okay. I so Maybe I'm confusing the timing. I, I think it means the same thing either way. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on page 11? Just to be clear, though, it should be the state Republican officials. Uh, yeah. Page 12. Uh, yep, comment twice. I have at least. Who's coming back? And page 13, I have comment twice. <laughs> Leave the back. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. Yeah. We have to go back to page 11. I'm sorry. Right, go ahead. Um, still under the no total resolution discussion. Thomas wondered, this is the third line. Thomas wondered what the citations are for some of the numbers included. She does not think we should have right. vague language. <laughs> She <laughs> does not think. Very good. I even had that highlighted, but I just took the S off of things. All right. Are we good here with January 6 minutes? Who's we'll approved the minutes of January 6th as amended? Well, a couple more comments. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, well, yeah, I, the comments. I said that and then we backed up. Yeah. It's a blanket room. Yeah, I think we covered that. Mm -hmm. Aren't you going to get cold? Do I second that motion? Oh, do we have a second the motion? Because I think there was a motion. <laughs> Matt Senior motioned, Lisa Hand seconded. Lisa, <laughs> Lisa I'm sorry. <laughs> what just happened? Don't let that get out. Oh, <laughs> I'm trying to use last names in the first name. I, I, All right, I, I object. No offense. Hey. <laughs> Everybody in favor of the January 6 minutes as amended, please say aye. 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 Guess what? We have more minutes to do. What? Woohoo. Third one. Minutes, hours. <laughs> January 13th minutes. <laughs> well, I'm going to my back. Do we skip over the goals? Goals are just a consolidation <laughs> of all your minutes into that. This is for our special meeting. Yeah. 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 Just go commission. Yeah. What? January Finance Committee and Student Board of Ed. Was uh, our joint oh, oh, special joint, meeting minutes. Oh, the joint meeting of the board and the council. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Move to approve the minutes of the January 13th Coventry Town Council and Board of Education joint special meeting. Second. Thank you. Any changes, corrections, or additions? Right. So. I listed Lisa Thomas twice and I left Lisa Conant out. Oh boy. I don't know so you were at the wrong that. meeting. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and I have been successfully cloned. <laughs> Which may or may not Apparently be thing. the thing. I don't know what's going on there. So you're taking out the second Lisa Thomas also. That's what you're mentioning. Right. Substituting Connick. <laughs> yeah, just change the word Thomas to Coleman. Uh, Connick, sorry. Let's see what's going on here. Any other? I got one. Go ahead. Um, and I think it's a couple times throughout the document, but uh, let's see. Under two microgrid project update, in the second paragraph, it's um, one, two, three. At the near the end of the fourth line, it says may also be used during on grid times. Mm -hmm. It's just on grid. And then I think there's one more of those, but we'll get there when we get there. Go ahead. There's not much to these minutes. Yeah. <laughs> um, at that same paragraph, or near the bottom of this page, one, two, three, four, fifth line up, there's uh, the line that starts O'Brien, mm -hmm. and the line before is Matt O'Brien. I'm just curious as to which one. Well, so I'm looking for a junior or a senior. I left senior. Matt O'Brien and Matt O'Brien Jr. under the roll call, so I was consistent with that throughout the remainder so of the So it means senior. What? So that means I can senior. add that, though. Yes. All right. So I guess you should add that to the roll call too. Then. So it's clear. Sounds good. I appreciate it. I, my name's actually Matt Brown. I name's understand. Matt Junior. <laughs> That's what it says. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. We also don't. John O'Brien. He was, he, he was, he was, he was one of the micro centers project. Oh right, Richard right. O'Brien. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was by the door. The next time we go to that meeting, there'll be another <laughs> John O'Brien. I think there should be another Lisa. Well, there mm -hmm. you go. All right, anything else? Nope. 
Aye. Aye. All right. All those in favor of approving these minutes as amended, please say aye. 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 Thank you. Next item is our consent agenda. Do I have a motion to approve our consent agenda? So moved. Thank you. There's nothing on it, is there? Yeah. Second. Thank you, John. You're welcome. Is there anything anybody wants to remove? No. I'm so sorry, but yes. <laughs> I do want to remove the um, uh, piece about the link. Uh, the uh, Joshua's trust. Yeah, Joshua's trust. <laughs> Thanks. Eight 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 Okay. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, removing 8F5 and 8F6, please say aye. 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 Thank you. <coughs> All right. I am going to choose not to report the efforts to get out of here <laughs> at a reasonable hour. Are there any council members that want to report on anything this evening? I had a brief report, but... I, it can wait if we want to speak no, so long. I can wait till next meeting. All right, you sure? Well, we're here. All right, I'll just I'll do it quickly. Um, I just wanted to talk about um, uh, 2020 marking the centennial anniversary of American women's right to vote, and I'm pleased to announce that the town is continuing uh, to participate in marking this event. Um, thank you, John. Sorry, um, <laughs> I just realized we're off. Lori Tolman, our town clerk, is working on coordinating celebratory activities and events in Coventry, and she's looking for more volunteers from the community to help with the planning and other tasks. Right now, one idea includes holding a contest uh, with possible participation from the schools, if they agree, and the community at large, to create a suffrage anniversary specific design for the I Voter stickers in November. Um, the Girl Scouts are also planning uh, to wear commemorative sashes during the Memorial Day Parade and are working on special badge projects that honor women's right to vote. Ideas for additional events and ways to celebrate are welcome from all. We're also planning to hang the posters sent by the Secretary of State's office in town hall. Do you want to ban it? Um, and if the town, if the board of ed agrees in the schools and the board, the okay. board of education building, just one. Just one. They're all oh, yeah. different. Cool. Got a camera? <laughs> wait, wait, wait Hi. for it. Wait. Oh, wait, I see where it's over here. Good angle. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Um, Denise Murrell, our Secretary of the State, will be hosting an informational meeting about the centennial at the Legislative Office building next Wednesday, January 29th. Um, and please. Uh, I'm just offering this out to everyone. Please consider helping out with this nonpartisan nationwide celebration and or asking your friends and family in the community to volunteer for it. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you, John and Matt. Any other council members wish to report on anything? Okay, moving on. 8C Finance Committee, Matt O'Brien, Senior. So we held a joint finance committee meeting with the board on January 13 to receive the audit. Leslie Zoll, partner from Bloom Shapiro, reported that Coventry received the Queen Audit opinion for our financial statements, the, fi the federal single audit report, and the state single audit report. Leslie Zoll reported favorable budget variances for both revenues and expenditures in fiscal year 2019. She noted a recommendation to review the segregation of duties as it pertains to cash receipts in the building department, but that no issues had been identified in connection with their testing. Leslie said that John and Amanda were pleasant to work with, as is the Board of Ed staff. A uh, question was raised about the cancellation of end-of-the-year encumbrances, and Amanda said that approximately $12,000 of the canceled encumbrances were the towns, with the remaining 46000 coming from the Board of Education. 
Then we went through several of the Board of Education's monthly reports with Bob Carroll providing information about each and answering questions of any of the members of the committee. This was very helpful and informative, we thought. We discussed a number of current building projects to get an update on their status. These included the auditorium wall project and the potential need to reinforce it due to insufficient rebar. The security grant <coughs> that was received last year in the fourth round of security grants, which has provided window film for the K through five <coughs> schools, bollards for outside of both schools, and some new locks, doors, and cameras, and the Coventry Grammar School parking lot project. Amanda Backhouse distributed a spreadsheet showing the financial status of the school building energy efficiency committee. Amanda reported that the state has finally agreed that the fire door was a code violation and we're waiting to hear back about our state grant application. We will go out to bid once that happens. Uh, then next we discussed the CGS CHR roofs. John Alcesa reported that the roof on the complex is now 22 years old and is starting to actually have leaks. This is also true of the roof at Robertson School. John said it's time to start preparing a plan to deal with this issue. He thinks we need to get the design work done this summer if we can. Uh, next, we discussed a number of IT issues related to data backup and recovery. Got errors on here. Cybersecurity and WAN rack fiber install at CGS CH, CH, GHR. Excuse me. After concluding the joint meeting, then we held our regular finance committee meeting. Uh, Amanda Backhouse reviewed her report, and our current tax collections are up slightly over last year. Both the town and board of ed are on track for their expenditures. Cobra and sewer use at collections are both up from last year. We discussed the drastic current year change in the COBRA balance and wanted to clarify that it was due to the changes in our recycling contract. Rather than receiving payment for recycling, we're now paying to have it collected. Amanda had done an analysis of the impacts of our new waste and, waste and recycling pickup contract renewal and reported that she is projecting that next year COBRA expenses will exceed our anticipated revenue by almost $50,000. She suggested that the council consider an increase in Annual, the annual household charge of up to $10 and or changes in service during our budget deliberations this year. Our committee unanimously recommended that the town council accept the audit. And I recommend that you read the minutes for more detailed information and let us know if you have any questions. There's a lot of stuff in there. I didn't want to go through it all tonight. Just technically recommend to the council the acceptance of the audit. Yeah, that's probably what I meant. Actually, I said that the town council accept the audit. Oh, that's, thank you. That's what I read, so. Yeah. I'm hearing them. Oh, there you go. <coughs> Anybody have any questions of Matt's report? There's a lot more information in the minutes, so if you want to go through that. I did want to commend John and Amanda and the town staff for earning, basically, this very clean audit. The financial statement award again mm -hmm. this year, mm -hmm. too. So. We will apply for it for the mm -hmm. Great. Doing a good job. Mm -hmm. All right, John, your final <coughs> All right, uh, so you have a full mem memo. I'm going to highlight just a couple items um, uh, that some have come in since uh, writing that. The Folly Lane uh, Army Corps Engineer Permit was received, so that was the next major stumbling block for us to get out to bid and uh, get that bridge uh, project in, um, hopefully under construction this summer. Uh, last week, we also had uh, a not so good meeting. Uh, on uh, the, the Swamp Road intersection project. The um, CONDOT um, decided that we have to do a total signal replacement uh, versus just adding one leg on it. Um, that will delay the project by one construction season. Uh, it will also impact, we'll have to pay the engineer to do additional design work to design that state sig signal uh, for it. Um, so we'll probably need to come back for additional. That's the town's portion of the project. The state's paying for that. Yeah, they would actually pay for the construction, assuming they amend the amount of the of, of the lots of grant, which they historically always have. But it could be up to twenty thousand dollars more design fee. So we went back through the council cap, uh, cap region council of governments, uh, and back to the DOT program administrator of the LOTSIC program, and he disagrees with the traffic control division. Okay. So now we have an internal fight within DOT saying, you should have been at the original scoping meeting, um, which they were not. Um, so I don't know where we're going to end up, but I'm concerned that at the end of the day, they'll decide that having this grant paid for at full new four-way intersection is going to be better than I'm trying to add on. So uh, I just want to prepare that 
at, at this point, I'm not very comfortable that we're going to have construction this summer. Does this uh, go into the whole new signal? Does that offer any like increased flexibility? <coughs> Yes, or the design better. of the intersection no. might be like a silver lining of no. some sort? No? Okay. The only thing it will do is it would allow a different type of signal. Mm -hmm. um, it would allow probably a camera controlled signal. So that as you go, as you look at signals now, you see little cameras up there. Mm -hmm. So what it does, instead of the magnetic, you know, sensors. drive up sensors, it anticipates so they actually work faster. And the treadmill ones, it only knows the first car, so it doesn't yeah. know if you have 80 cars behind right. it. Right. So with, with the cameras, it looks farther back and can anticipate and change the timing of the signal. So they're more mm -hmm. sophisticated, which means more expensive. Uh, but it also means that they will probably have to have the big metal posts mm -hmm. versus the hanging wires. It's aesthetics in the eye of the holders, less wires hanging, uh, more big structures, they do big black poles. Uh, um, so. Uh, to be determined, but it was a discouraging uh, meeting. And we still continue to talk about uh, the Northfields to Swamp Road connector. Um, we do not have a meeting in the minds of the property owner. Uh, we, will, we told them we would get some appraisal work done to see uh, you know, what... Meaning he doesn't want to give it up or he doesn't think you're being fair as cost? Uh, I'd rather just leave it the way I'm okay. saying it right now <laughs> so we don't get into family arguments. <laughs> Um, uh, but we are, we'd like to come up with numbers to show what the value would be. So uh, we've hired uh, uh, Bob Stewart and appraisal. Would you be gaining the property also with the other road? There'd be some substitution. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. So there, there's more discussion. I'm just letting you know right up front there's not a. He said he, I don't know if it's a he or she. So it's a couple. Uh, so there's, they're not a meeting of minds right now. So we'll, we'll add, add Understanding fully, they're not ready to proceed ahead. We'll continue to provide some information to them to see if they'll alter their decision or not. And I think you <coughs> mentioned that they were not happy at all with the right turn only or left turn only. Uh, DOT was not happy with that. So it, it's likely that there's no change uh, or, uh, or a more extensive change with kind of a concrete barrier with major turns so the fire or emergency access could not go in that way. Okay. Uh, so uh, emergency access would only be able to go in all the way up to Forge, which is not acceptable to the town. Mm -hmm. So, so we're we're continuing as those discussions. Uh, aside from that, things are great. Um, <laughs> will they pay for any piece of the connector because of their decision? <laughs> um, we are saying, asking them, if you don't want us to do Northfields. We take the money that you allocated to mm -hmm. Northfields to the connector instead because we have to provide. So we're going through this complicated process to, to say, well, in that case, mm -hmm. uh, so we don't know, but, uh, but we're working. Um, um, the sewer meeting um, on the Bolton Vernon sewer was uh, uh, delayed by the state, and we're continuing to uh, look at uh, our. our elected officials, state elected officials are working on that issue and uh, we're working with our uh, town attorneys to see if they can provide some guidance to us. Um, uh, we met last week with Downs Construction uh, which offered to do a free cost estimate of the, uh, the library project. Um, it was a good meeting. Uh, they're preparing those. Are they done yet? No. <laughs> they're preparing those numbers. Uh, uh, they understand fully that uh, any project, if, if a project goes forward, they, you know, they don't have it inside, uh, it would have to be a bid, so they're doing this at, at full risk. Uh, our architect forwarded the files to help them uh, with mm -hmm. that. Uh, so at this point, just because the timing of meetings, we're looking at uh, February 18th presentation of the council, just to make sure that it's done, because I think otherwise it's a little fast. Um, so um, the, the library building committee meets tomorrow, and they'll start gearing up to uh, an 18th meeting to uh, um, you know, address the goals and give the uh, council goals and to address the uh, uh, their project. Um, um, 
data backup project. Uh, it is actually going better, uh, fairly well. Um, uh, school board has moved mostly over. We need to buy one other rack because when the service came, it didn't fit our rack. So, uh, um, so, uh, but things are transitioning well. Those things could be a disaster, but uh, the ba backup system will be installed in the police station for the school system and us, vice versa. Uh, is going on, uh, which is part of our response to our cybersecurity plan. Um, uh, working with the Board of Ed, uh, we've had a couple of meetings and we're in the final, we have a draft of the Peg Pescia grant um, to replace this, how many years old? 13? When these went in? Yeah. 11-year-old. Yeah. Um, so there's a maximum grant uh, of 150000 The equipment actually comes in about 204 for both the town and the Board of Education, where there's a provision within the grant that says uh, we could apply separately each for our component, mm -hmm. but we're, we're putting in one combined grant because it says unless you have good reason to go exceed that, we're going to say, hey, really, we could have come for three hundred thousand. We're asking for two or four, um, um, but we're one system, and it's more efficient for us to stay one system than we have the same equipment replaced the same time. But to let you know, life of service, the board that already had a, a failure of one of their main pieces, where they couldn't broadcast their meeting for a while, and they found the used parts in some vendor found a used parts of one that was being thrown out somewhere, but they aren't making any parts. So uh, we are at mission critical uh, for the system. And yeah, it will be upgraded to be, you know, the, the new stuff, but um, they'll keep the core, the wires and, 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 and like. But, um, so uh, an example of us working cooperatively with the IT people at the Board of Ed, and uh, we're actually going to have the application going under their name and their uh, Pura Public Utilities Regulatory Authority ID, you know, thing. Um, so, um, so I'll let you know in our spare time we're looking at that. <laughs> um, Sunday at 9 p.m. So, uh, so Laura, you know, was working as the member of that, uh, the country vision committee on that and uh, we had a check with uh, Charter Spectrum, they endorsed the equipment that uh, our consultant uh, HP uh, equipment came up with. So, on track, highly competitive. Grant hasn't occurred in about six, seven years. So there's a, a, about $5 million, but uh, nobody knows who's going to come out that would work for it. Mm -hmm. uh, fairly short notice, which is always a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Because people caught off guard, we knew it was coming, so we were working on it before. So, question down. Can um, a not for profit apply for the CDBG grant regional testing money? Is it only for homeowners? Only for homeowners. So, if it's a church selling the rectory, which is a home, would that work? Church. Church. Church itself. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Don't know. It's mm. uh, an interesting question. Mm. I think the owner has to be a person. A person. Okay. Well, have him give it to me. <laughs> we still are looking for one last low-income person, or we lose like three points at our future grant. Uh, we yeah. may have found one. We're trying to talk them into applying. People assume the, the income levels are pretty high. Uh, if you're retired and living in your home, that you probably qualify. You probably qualify. So. Get it tested because whenever you want to sell your house, it's going to have to be tested. Mm -hmm. uh, so, <clears throat> but, so this is a way that would help pay for that testing. This would pay 100% of the testing for the court <clears throat> test. Free is good, mm -hmm. and we can't find anyone uh, because people assume that low income means low income. It's like fifty-four thousand dollars a year. Uh, charts on our newsletter that is available on our, on our website. Uh, we'll publish it one last time, but we're I'm worried about those points. We don't have funds about them. And we have five towns. Have you posted anything about this on your town manager Facebook page yeah. that we could share? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll do it again. We have an e-blast coming out another week or two. Uh, another week. Um, 
right now it's in the newsletter as both the printers, but you know the clock is ticking. Uh, they, those grants are due in April. Um, so um, that's it, it for projects. I'll move into microgrid real quickly. Um, you're finishing up the install on Friday of the monitoring equipment um, because they're going to be out here. Uh, we're also going to get them together with our firm that's writing the request for proposals for the school building committee unit you know, ventilators mm. uh, project. So we're having a, a joint meeting before we issue the RFP with the microgrid team and their engineers and our engineers writing the RFP, make sure that we're on the same wavelength. So a quick meeting this Friday and then a couple weeks uh, we'll be issuing that RFP. Timing wise, it's kind of lining up to go fairly well uh, in terms of uh, getting the firm on board and some of the start of work uh, and the time schedule that you saw at the microgrid workshop. At our conference call on Friday, they said they feel a little bit more comfortable about the time frames they gave in their presentation, which are attached to the minutes of the meeting here. So at this point, um, they're feeling better, not, not haven't found anything else that's cropping up. So um, uh, that's a microgrid uh, update. Uh, oh, I'm, I forgot one other thing. Community Development Block Grant uh, public hearing is also scheduled for February 18th. Uh, uh, at that point, after that public hearing, you'll be asked to select a project. We are going along the assumption of, of starting the paperwork for the Orchard Hills project, but <coughs> officially, you need to hear the public and then um, make, make that decision after that. But you'll start seeing streams of policies and paperwork over the next couple of agendas that you have to approve for us to go through. Uh, this week, we actually have the, the RFPs for our consultant. Um, so, you know, we have to go through and make sure that the consultant is, is who, you know, is the one preparing this grant. Uh, and we have to advertise for that. Um, so, that's where we are. Um, uh, crumbling concrete foundations, I just want you to know that um, anyone applying for a grant right now, uh, even if the application is complete, it's uh, you, and you get a, a status called pending because under the legislation, the uh, insurance uh, trust uh, captive um, has a statutory uh, expiration deadline that it disappears as an entity in a year and a half uh, and they already have more applications than they could do in that time frame. So they are not misleading anyone. Unless that law is changed. They get an extension. And, and, or they remove the deadline and they will grandfather it to say 10 years. I mean, this project's up like, well, wait a year and a half. Right. Um, they just had their 100th house uh, the first day of opening up for new applications, <coughs> they got 130 applications within 24 hours. Um, and um, uh, Mike uh, told me, you know, I have four more people today uh, coming forward to count. Yeah, so our numbers are starting to climb. Um, so um, partly is the time frames to get an engineering test. I had my house inspected in April. I got my report last week. So um, that's the backlog. So um, anyhow, um, so there's legislative suggestions coming out of, uh, out of uh, councils, uh, small towns, and uh, capital region council governments to try to make these changes. Um, so we we'll need to push hard, and I know our, uh, our state senator and representative will be on the forefront of that, and they're part of that caucus uh, uh, that, uh, that is leading the charge on, on these issues, along with uh, Senator Amar of South Windsor uh, and one other person I'm forgetting right now. There's a lot, but I can't remember. Um, so um, that's it for Crumbling Foundations. A lot of work to be done. Um, I put on here for your consideration. Um, um, a couple of years ago, we tried a, a uh, MPA student um, from UConn. Um, it's a high price. Uh, it's like 14.5 or something like that. Um, 
um, for a semester. Uh, some towns have had really, really good experience with it. We did not. Uh, we did not get the right person. Um, we had the person we had applied for ended up um, not leaving their job. Uh, and then his mother had issues down in Atlanta. And now the company that he worked for happened to just move to Atlanta. Uh, getting into edible arrangements was where he was, was working. And now they're into uh, CBB uh, products and so forth. Uh, so there's a not, not commitment. I just would need to get a form in for now. And Good question. Um, I think it says here on the third bullet, it's 16.5 for the whole year? For the whole academic year, not for a semester. I thought you said a semester 14.5. Um, yeah, yeah, that's that's correct. Okay, you're saying. So would you get it for one semester or for? for it, it's year? it's part time, but it's like two, it is the full year. So 16.5. And it's a complicated. Like a hat, like just the salary, not the benefits. There is no benefits. You, this is cover salary and benefits. If we pay UConn. They take care of it. They're actually become an employer. Right. Our grad our grad students yeah. are actually unionized. They get salary. Um, so they're not our employee. Right, right, right. right they're right. your kind of employee. Correct. So they're, they're contracting to us. Um, some of them that have gone through that program are now like assistant town managers uh, for towns. Um, Let's get one of those. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, Interesting. So part of it, we can go through the process and see if we come up with a good person. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a. Do you feel better about being able to pull you know, identify one now? Uh, I think so. What happened last time is you get to pre-screen the whole class and you come up, you get all the resumes, and you pick like two or three. So I picked the, the one I wanted, and at a certain time, you have, everyone calls. <laughs> and I called and I got a message. Ah. All right. So I left the message and said, call me. <laughs> uh, and then I waited five minutes. And the answer is, keep calling. You have to go on because by the time I, I went to my second choice, gone. Third choice, gone. Uh -huh. Fourth choice, gone. And finally, the next day, the guy I said, "Oh, we didn't get anyone this year." Uh, then the guy I wanted called me. So clearly, somebody else. He was waiting for somebody else, and I know who, and <laughs> didn't get that one. Um, <laughs> so we were second choice, and then he backed out. So it was kind of uh, like, all right. But the, the person we had just was not a second year student, was a first year grad student, and there's a huge difference. Um, and just couldn't connect, and, and we, and man, we tried to help me through, and it just um, didn't work out. Um, what we thought were simple assignments just didn't, didn't help. So I, we waited a, waited a couple years here. I think I'd like to try it because, again, everyone else seems to have great experience with it. Um, so I think we just didn't, and the person started late and finished early and it was just, so if you allow me, you make the final decision when it comes out of budget, um, uh, budget time, so we can just withdraw, but if, if you're okay, I'll put the application in <coughs> subject to understanding that it's just another budget, budget issue that has to stand on its own when that comes around to it. Is that, that a, like a consensus thing? Just or? Gonna ask that. Well, well we just for him to consensus? apply. He just said that we can approve it. <laughs> he's going to see if he can get a good person and if he's got a proposal, then I'll give it to you and decide if you want to find it. So then CCM legislative yep. was taken yep. off? Hi. Oh, yeah. Lisa? Um, I'm just wondering. When you gave us the frog information, you said, you know, are there things that you, we should let you know if there are things we wanted to, we wanted you to advocate for. Is that the same with this? Yeah. And you'll get one for the Council of Small Towns, too. I just had some final input to add things like um, sewer extensions. Uh, oh, that one. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's I good got legislation. So I got about be three, about three yeah. things added to cost platform last week. So. so if I have questions about some of these things, I should just talk to you offline, just give you a call and ask you yeah. about how something might impact Coventry or help us or whatever. Sure, and then we can talk about it at a future council meeting. Okay. Because mm -hmm. time, the legislative session doesn't come in until early February, so we, we have time in February to talk, talk about it before we start campaigning. 
the I mean, bills aren't really going to come out until almost the second week of February. Do so. you have a big one you said that we should all look at or something? No, I'll just, just in the interest of time, maybe I'll just send John my questions and thoughts and then next meeting we can talk about how it's worthwhile. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions on that while it's open for? Okay, next item is 8F6, the warranty deed grant to Joshua's tract, the parcel at Flanders Road. We have a lot to discuss. Thank Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> no, I just, you know, I always like to thank Joshua's Trust for being our, our partner. They've helped us. Not only have they on their own preserved land in the town of Coventry, but they've partnered with us um, in the past to protect land. And, by, and this Schmidt property um, is a really great piece of land. And it's also a great piece of history. Um, and I won't read the whole thing, but um, you can go on the Joshua's Just website and read the history about the family who lived there. And um, they had three girls and eight boys and how they used the property and played. Um, but it's a beautiful piece, and it gives us river access. And it would be phenomenal if at some point that becomes a place where there can be fishing and we can perhaps have a kayak canoe input place. And, and that's something we've talked about for a long time. So it's great to see this happening. And, um, it's great that Joshua's Trust came through and did this. Okay. But it's important to thank these organizations. They run on shoestrings. Alright, we're on to unfinished business item 9A 19 slash 20 dash 28 consideration and possible action recommendation by town attorney to repeal ordinance article 4 section 38 dash 91 through section 38 dash 96 due to changes in state law. So moved. Second. Any discussion? This is from our public hearing. We're going to repeal what we would have called the fracking ordinance or fracking waste ordinance. It's covered by state law. All, right. yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Next item of unfinished business 9B 19 slash 20 29. Consideration possible action recommendation by town attorney to consider a revision to section 70 88 of the town code entitled quote, public gathering, close quotes, to correct a typographical error. Move so moved. Second. Any discussion on that one? Should we just good. repeal it? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's actually something you could do different tonight. Meeting. You have to have a yeah. different public hearing. Do that, I think. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 That's unanimous. We are down to new business item 10D. 19 slash 20 dash 39 consideration and authorization for the town manager to execute a revised employment agreement with the director of finance. Is that in my packet? We emailed that out um, yeah. <laughs> on Friday. Okay. Do you have copies? Just the one. <coughs> Now, uh, if you want to have into that session, you could do that first if you choose to. I'm so sorry, I didn't hear what you said. You could, you could just put this on the sidecar temporarily and, and go into the second session and act afterwards if you wish. Okay, that's good enough. Okay. I'm comfortable with that. Mm -hmm. So watch out. Do we need discussion? No. I read this one once before. So. Right. <laughs> I'd like to feel in your executive session. Okay. And okay. we'll table that till we get to executive session. We're going to take it up during executive session? No, you can't. That's you can talk about saying. it. You, you can, can discuss it. it and we're going to come session. out of executive session. To take an action, you have to be out of executive session. Right. Okay. So we don't, do we need, we're allowed to talk about it in executive session if we, but yeah, does a specific motion need to be made or will it we'll, come under we'll, one of these one motions? of the two that we have, I think, right? No. Yes. Yes. One's for real estate. Oh, oh so the other one could encompass mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I got you. <coughs> okay. So for now, we'll move on to 10E, 19 slash 
20-40, the acceptance of the audit for the fiscal year 2018-19. I move that the town council, oh, go ahead, John. No, you go ahead. Accept the, accept the audit, yeah, that's fine. Do Second. I, thank you, John. Any further discussion besides thanking our staff for their wonderful work? I echo that right there. Keep it up. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Next item, 10F, 19-20-41. Consideration Possible Action Board of Education request to use reserve funds for capital expenditures for CIP projects in amount of $98,500. <coughs> Move to approve the Board of Education's request to use the reserve fund for capital expenditures for CIP projects in the amount of $98,500. Second. Second. Thank you. John, do you have anything to say about this? No, this, these were in the uh, capital improvement plan, so under our policy, they're basically... They don't actually have to ask us if it's in their capital yeah, improvement plan, right? The warning is not as clear as we'd like, so it doesn't hurt. I absolutely agree with you. That's our, uh, our understanding, but they do really prefer to make sure that we don't get into an issue because we need to carefully. And just for the public, it's for uh, CHS cafeteria reconfiguration project, the air conditioner for the LGI and lecture hall, and the water filtration, water filtration project, correct? Yes. Uh, so the cafeteria um, is tied in with the asbestos removal, which is part of the bonding. So they'll remove the tiles as part of the bonding project. Uh, and then they need to move the uh, wall, which they're covering the cost of that, to give them a little bit more space uh, for... Are the they relocating equipment? Uh, I think it's the whole flow. Um, so, but they're hoping to get that done this summer. When they do something like this, do they actually get an estimate, or do they just estimate? Um, They've been working with design build firms to get some of these estimates, uh, or engineers. Uh, water filtration is kind of a specialized uh, issue for the water system. And then for the air conditioning unit, they say that they have a recent quote that's right. allowing them to reduce your cost. I'd also like to note that all three of these were um, unanimously voted on and approved as requested by the Board of Education. Okay. Any further discussion? Do you have a running total? I'm going to vote yes, but do you have a running total on that account? I know it's 238,000. Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Uh, next item is. Mr. Haburn's concerns regarding the Registrar of Voters. <coughs> uh, oh, it's 11A. Okay. We do not. Um, have oversight over the registrars. That's the Secretary of State. And I know the Secretary of State has been contacted some time ago about our registrar, the Republican registrar, not being certified yet for her position. I do not know what stage the Secretary of State is investigating that. So I have spoken to her and asked her about signing up for the class. And she is signing up and asking our fiscal finance department for the proper paperwork. I'll keep you posted or, but it's really, it's a secretary of state issue more than a town council issue. But I did ask her. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, just for the record, the town does not have the authority to remove them from, right. from office. It have, have to be a state. Or the um, voters. Or the voters in a future election, but right. prior to their term being up. It has to be uh, only this. Uh, <coughs> so, for clarity, what's the current status? Is is uh, Miss Mrs. Sewell? Mm -hmm. um, is she currently signed up she for the classes? Up. She, she is in the she process not yet of signing up. up. She's taken one. I think she took one with very initial start of grammar. Yeah. She has not signed up for any more as of yet. How many are there? Eight. I think there's eight modules, and, and when I went and looked at the availability yeah. of them. Yeah, some, um, I looked today to a summer group, <coughs> yeah, to far away. away and yeah. They, they, have, them, so. they have recently exchanged some things, so they actually have a classes that you've had. I was going to say, I thought when I went on the site, it looked like uh, UConn has a special facility allowing them to they, participate in any of the trainings offered around the state, but they would just go to the UConn campus, which 
happens to be quite close to us. That's, that's relatively that new within the last three or four months, from my understanding. Yeah, okay. March. When I went, whenever we looked at the issue last, which yeah. might be at the so tail end see. of that, um, yeah, it, I mean, it was clearly on there yeah. back then when I looked. Because I did look and say, well, well what is March, what are we Roach doing? was trying to get her classes. They kept on canceling classes that she needed to take. So right, which problem. is for no, for lack of people. for lack of other people showing up. They don't teach a class for one person. Yep. So, but it's also my understanding from previous having to look at this that there's kind of a track that they that they do go through that kind of starts after an election when they know new people are coming in and will need to be certified. So you kind of have to hop on that train and then follow the this, this modules yes. through. There's like kind of a rotation of one modules, one through eight, and then they start that over again when there's another election. So if you're not on the train when it leaves the station, it's, it's hard to jump in and try to get there. Although I don't think they have to take them in order. No. In numeric order. All right. Thank you. I move that the town council enter into executive session pursuant to the Connecticut General Statutes 1206D, discussion of the selection of a site or the lease sale or purchase of real estate by a political subdivision of the state when publicity regarding such a site, lease sale, purchase or construction would cause a likelihood of an increased price until such time as all the property has been acquired or all proceedings or transactions concerning same have been terminated or abandoned with the following people in attendance. Seven members of the town council, John Alcesser and Amanda Backhouse. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 I move also that the town council enter an executive, executive session pursuant to Connecticut General Statute 1206E, discussion of any matter which would result in the disclosure of public records or the information therein contained described in subsection B of section 1210 with the following people in attendance, the seven members of the town council, the town manager, John Alcester, and Amanda Backhouse, director of finance. Second. Thank you. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.